I'm ready. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Mechanics Institute for the start of our January Tuesday night marathon. I'm Abel Talamantes, Chess Director at the Mechanics Institute, and joining me in the commentary is uh, Women's International Master, Dr. Lexi Root. And thanks for being available because uh, Feeding Master Paul Whitehead was having some uh, internet issues at home uh, while he was playing his uh, arena matches and uh, Alexi was available watching those and available uh, to jump in the commentary. So thanks for being available, Alexi, and uh, we'll have some fun tonight following rounds of one pleasure. and two. Absolutely. And uh, look at this game. This is uh, our board one uh, in the tournament with Alexander Lenderman uh, playing Ashik Uzuman, and they're already at this position after only like 10 minutes and change. Oh, okay. Let me. Oh, there I can see. Oh my gosh, they're in an end game. All right. And it looks like the Grandmaster is the one <laughs> change up. So, so, and it looks like that A pawn's gonna roll too. So, so that's so Ash what, Ashik in trouble there. Uh, I think so. I'm afraid so. And um, switching over to board two, which is Grandmaster Gadir Gusayanov against uh, Jonah Bush. Um, oh my gosh! Look I at think this. The Grandmasters are start are uh, causing some trouble and here the, to players. He, he seemed. King, yeah. Yeah. The king on G isn't looking too good. And this came out of this <laughs> position. I'm going to go back a few moves here. Okay. And uh, it looks like. Boom. It was uh, a sacrifice, as uh, we'll see it come Ooh, up. Oh, one of the bishop takes h7 sacrifices. Yeah. All right. Thing. Wow. And this is where we're at now. Okay. Well, you know, maybe, I mean, it's white to move. Let's see if we can uh, see what white, okay, white castle. It, it's uh, like the king is like pinned there. Like, yeah, the king can't move, so I wonder, like, something like even h4, h5 could be really tough, right? I mean, what I mean, what can you do? Uh, All you can yeah. do is rook h8, right? Yeah, right. I mean, you have to stop h5 because you don't want the king to be driven to h6 and walk into a discovery. I mean, there's nothing you're going to be able to do, though, right? I mean, well, I mean, I think your idea of rook h8 might be a good preventative, but but we'll that won't it. but that won't yeah. work, right? Because if he just goes h4, well, it it it's black's move. So if black goes rook h8, and then yeah. you go h4. You're just you're just gonna do h5 the next move. I think uh, black would have to go rook uh, h h5, right? Let's able. Let's look at another idea. Let's look at that pawn on e5, what I'm looking at is the bishop on f4 is overworked. It's defending the pawn on e5, and it's also defending the knight on g5. So I'm kind of wondering, can we play knight takes e5 to uh, distract that bishop? What do you think? Knight takes? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look at that. Speaking of... Uh, speaking of uh, trying to do overworked pieces i guess black thinks that the queen is overworked that's a that's interesting i did not expect that move i was expecting more knight takes e5 so and that's yeah i'm not sure what the follow-up is on this because wouldn't it be knight takes uh knight e5 yeah, i guess it's still knight takes e5 and you know actually I mean, white sacrificed a piece, so black has just decided this is the time to give it back. And uh, Alexander Lenderman has already won his first round game. Oh, the one where he had the rook? Yes. 
So he gets a little break between now and his second round. Yeah. And, you know, we, we often see these in first rounds of, like, open mm-hmm. events like this where, you know, the top players are playing, you know, uh, sort of like the middle section of the of the section. Because uh, even, even if I'm, as I'm looking at Kyron Griffith's game here, uh, you know, this one's 20 moves deep already. Uh, Kyron playing uh, white uh, black against Tom Mazur, a national master. Oh, wow. So, okay. This one looks, honestly, well, that last one, I like what Jonah Bush was doing, giving back material. So I, I'll be interested to see what happens there. But this one looks like, like a more normal game. We don't have a bunch of sacrificing back and forth going on. Let's see what the material is. It's even, right? Yeah, so, yeah even so far. And this, this out of a Carol Khan, which okay. Kyra loves. I, I mean, uh I think White is doing okay. Like that's a pretty pretty nice looking knight, but I mean if White's the lower rated player, I'm sure he's pretty happy to have gotten this far and with nothing, you know, horrible having happened to him. But isn't it typical when like the lower rated players get to a position like this where it looks even and there's you know been a few exchanges, uh, doesn't that really favor the stronger player? Uh, whereas the lower rated player thinks, well, everything is solid, the material's even, but in reality, they know how to play the end game better, so they're actually at a. You know, I I think this I think uh, I think this one's still going to be quite a battle. I mean, um, Kyron's position has a few problems, like his rook on a eight isn't really doing too much, um, you know, so. I, I mean, that's a nice move, centralizing the queen. Maybe white could play something like b3 and c4 to drive that queen out of there. Um, so, I mean, I guess white, black's also maybe threatening knight h4 or something. And uh, Thomas Mazur's a national master, so. Uh... Yeah, I think Thomas is uh, hanging tough here. I am a little worried. What do you think, Abel, about black? Playing something like knight h4 and just saying, okay, I want to, I want you to compromise your, your pawns on the king side. Like, I'm gonna just threaten queen g2 mate. Right. I mean, to... you have to do something, right? Uh... Yeah. And the thing is, I guess both f, that f3 and f4. You know, maybe those each have their drawbacks. Maybe black is creating some uh, weaknesses in white's kingside pawn structure but you know it's 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 still uh it's still a game so we'll see so let's uh jump back to that other yeah, game we were good. we were looking at yeah yeah let's see what happens in jonah bush's game the, that would be this crazy crazy game here. yeah so so white has bounced back from taking that piece back to the uh back into the attack and now the material Okay, so black is now temporarily pawn up. Oh, wow. Did you check this out? Look at that. Black is sacrificing a rook for two pawns. Wow. That's actually, that move is pretty exciting. So, I so, mean, if you're, if you're going to take, you have to try to take it. Otherwise, you just gave back another pawn. But, oh, wow. So, takes, knight takes. Where oh, is so is the idea that with the knight on d5, it takes away the f6 escape square if if white yeah, plays but, queen h7? Yeah, yeah. I um, that is that is the idea. You're absolutely right. But what so if maybe, what if maybe rook h8? Right. Maybe, yeah, you have, you have to do rook h8. Have to do rook h8. Maybe we have to throw that in. Oh, hey, look, we called it, Abel. I always feel super smart when <laughs> when we call a move before it happens. Although I realize with the delay, it looks like we're just announcing a move that everyone else has already seen. But honestly, I did not see that move. I called it before I saw it. So now so, black has to do king f6, no? Okay, so what's the threat now? Um What's your threat with the discovery, Abel? Why are you saying we have to move our king? I'm just asking. I mean, I'm sure there's a good reason. Uh, well, that's a good question. 
Like, where's that knight going that you're so scared of? Is I guess I guess maybe just knight takes e6 is scary enough, right? So you're thinking you just don't want to deal with that. Well, uh, and then what does it what does it matter now that the rook is on d5, right? Well, the rook on d5 is is we're now actually triple attacking that knight on e5, right? So that knight on e5 is is kind of a goner. So maybe that right there is a reason to play king f6 to try to to try to support that knight. I, I can't imagine what Jonah Bush is going through right here, having to Jonah cap Bush is probably having like a hundred heart attacks with all. I this. mean, having to calculate all this stuff uh, against the but GM. You know what? He's doing okay. He he's is going. hanging in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's hanging in. Look at this. He found a move knight g4, so that blocks the power of the queen. Uh, it kind of gives White a free move, though. So I wonder what White's going to do with this um, sort of free move. You know. And you well, as far as Black's concerned, the the rook's hanging right now. Well, that's true. White might White might be moving the rook on this move. That's for sure. That's definitely a possibility. Uh, I, yeah, we'll see. So we pre, we're predicting a rook move. Is that what we're saying? <laughs> like I don't know, maybe rook d6 followed by rook hd1. Yeah, rook d6 looks pretty. Uh, I mean, it's a thought. Pretty, pretty snug. Yeah. Well, you know, then we're putting some pressure on e6. So, and I kind of like. The idea of doubling rooks on the D file. Oh my God, he played it. Yeah. I played like Red Master. Wow, <laughs> now I'm super excited for the day. <laughs> two, two, four. I get way too excited when I guess moves. No, it's fun. It's like it's like you solved a puzzle, right? Like it feels that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. No, and I do think I do think that coming up, Rook H D one. Um, is looking looking like a strong move. I mean, White's just. This is probably the game Nick DeFermian is going to annotate in the newsletter. Oh, this will be definitely in there for sure. Yeah, because just because it's fun. It's got I mean, yeah. So much excitement going on. So you know, yeah. So while we wait for this to play out, let's go to our board four, and this <laughs> is this is Fide Master Eric Yuhan Lee playing White. King and Queen 2017 against uh, Chelsea Zhu. And uh, it's nice to see uh, Eric. He's played at the Mechanics Institute uh, quite often. And uh, I know he is <laughs> going around the country chasing norms. Uh, oh, wow. Looking to... Uh, Even right now with the pandemic, he's going around the country chasing norms? Well, where Charlotte well, well, yeah, Charlotte. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Kyron Griffith uh, next week is going to be in Charlotte uh, playing in a Norm event. So wow, good luck, Kyron. So we'll be. Well, that's exciting. We will Does be Kyron rooting for him. I am Norms, by the way. I know he's an FM. That is a good question, and if I'm remembering right, I think he has uh, one. Oh wow! I think. Good for him. I think. Okay. Or is it two? Well, he'll probably come back on later and correct us, right? Yeah, he'll be in the he'll be in the chat somewhere, and and we can ask him. Ask, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so. So you're saying that the the uh, white player is the one that's uh, going around uh, trying to chase a IM title in this game? Yeah, yeah. I mean, or he's he's actively looking for those opportunities. Um, Good for him. And he's a I talent. I think I think he's like 13 years old. Uh, wow! He, oh my goodness. Yeah, he's amazingly uh, tough and uh, uh, good family. It's been fun. We, Judah and I, have been uh, following his progress since he was ten, or oh wow, even before that. So, uh, very strong player, um, and uh, one that Paul really likes. He he knew that Eric was gonna be a breakout talent. So, so yeah, yeah it's so fun watching. Uh Watching players grow up and, and get strong. That's great. Speaking of uh, players growing up and getting strong, here's another one with okay. uh, National Master Rui Yang Yan. Yeah. Playing Christian Jensen, uh, mechanics regular. Those are both Bay Area players, right? Correct, correct. Yeah, Everyone? so that's exciting. You know what? I have to say I like White's uh, position here. White just seems to be sort of aiming at the yeah. king side. In, in a way that seems really menacing. Yeah, those so. bishops are like pointing that <laughs> yeah. way. And that, and and black black looks a little bit like 
uncoordinated. Like how it's hard to see a good breakout move for black. Let me check the material though. I'll be boring and count pawns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, yeah, even material. So it just looks like a a really nice position for white. So um, yeah, what a nice move. King H1 trying to bring our rook to the G file and cause more havoc. And Although, uh, does hang, yeah. wait, does that hang queen takes H3? Maybe I'm gonna take my words back. What about queen takes H3 here? Could that have been an overlook? Like, I'm a little confused. What do you think, Abel? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it. I mean, it's not, like, it's not, I I would... <laughs> it doesn't look fatal, but like, why would you do that on purpose, right? Yeah, because you could have played, you know what? Maybe it was a mouse slip because you could have played King H2. That had, still that had, one. that had to be what was meant because yeah, there's I'm no thinking, reason for that. Yeah, maybe she maybe she meant King H two and then Rook G one because I just I just can't see why you would give this pawn up and I don't even like Black's thinking about it. But and, and I know Christian I Jensen know. had to have been like, am I getting yeah, just set up? Kind of trick, but you know what? <laughs> Black is suddenly a little bit more alive because you know black can play like h5 right. and then in g4 trade off the queens and then have a it, I mean in end game in an end game white's position's not scary so I think I think that was just a terrible mouse slip and Alexa you got to jump back to this game look at oh yeah I'm ready to jump you know exactly where I'm going to look at oh. this <laughs> It says Grandmaster oh. Gadir Gusainov on oh, board no. two of the Tuesday night marathon against Jonah Bush. Yeah, he's just putting that pressure on. Look at that. Knight d5. Well, the queen's got to go somewhere, right? And would you believe the material is even, right? <laughs> the... Yeah, yeah. You know, we can, uh, in, in terms of Jonah, he's probably hoping that, you know, Gadir just runs out of uh, pieces to throw at him. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Right now, you know, I think, um, unfortunately for Gadir, h3 isn't really that good a move because you're not actually threatening to take the knight because your rook is well, hanging on h1. And that knight is like one of black's best pieces. So that must be a little bit annoying for Gadir, but maybe, okay, I'm going to make a prediction. Maybe we can play knight c7 and then just start cashing in by playing knight takes e6. So maybe knight c7 is coming. Knight um, c7. Maybe. Or we could be worried about rook takes g5, so we might play h4. So I'll, I'm going to hedge my bets and, and predict one of those moves. <laughs> you have you have to think that Jonah's got to love this game because just oh, the action. Yeah. Oh, I mean, hey, the, hey, my first choice move. Very I, good. All right. All right, then. See, it's just like, it seems like we can cash in a little bit and get that e6 pawn. And is black, does black have to play uh, rook e8? Well, I mean, black it, could No, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't do anything. That makes it worse, black, actually. Black, black could try rook takes g5 and get two, pawn, get two pieces for his rook, but then he's going to lose the rook on a8. That's what I'm saying about cashing in. I think after after white has made so many sacrifices, white's like, okay, now I'm going to just get all my material back with interest. You know, like I did all those fancy sacrifices and now I'm just going to get material back. <clears throat> and that, uh, that was done. Oh, rook g5! Uh, oh, I'm calling moves for both sides. Just trying okay. to alleviate the pressure. Yeah, no, I, I thought this was a, a reasonable try. So. And rook takes d7. What was it? What was on d7? Was it a bishop? bishop like, yeah, bishop. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, that's actually a nice response. Um, I like that move. Rather than bishop takes g5, you can play bishop takes g5 next move. You can play knight takes e6 next move. You can play a lot of things this next move, which yeah. is really black's like, oh no, now what? 
Yeah, right? really tough position to be G6 in. G6 is hanging, G5 is hanging. Oh, look, Judith said hi to us. Hi, Judith. Hey, Judith. <laughs> and uh, flipping over to this game between Reka Stare and... Oh, wow, uh, Reka's game. Yeah. Reka going to Oxford next year. And Reka just got accepted to Oxford University in the UK. Yeah. So congratulations uh, to her, very proud mom and in the, the chat. Proud mom. Yes. And uh, and uh, Reka herself is proud that she got mate on the board here. So she is oh, with, wow. with one point. Going to Oxford and getting a checkmate. Yeah, I mean, who, who, how many people can say that? I got accepted to Oxford and I checkmated <laughs> and somebody. I checkmated. Yes, that's super exciting. Hey, Judith, congratulations on everything. And I'm glad the games are going smoothly. That's good, and my pleasure to join. I mean, uh, you know, I feel fair, feel terrible for the viewers and for Paul that his internet isn't working, but I, I'm just glad I can help out. And uh, we're gonna see if maybe he can give it a shot in round two. Ooh, round two, sure, and absolutely. And then uh, the three of us can uh, chill and yeah. hang and uh, follow some games. Sure, Let's... or I can do more trivia, I don't know. Uh, Mike Walder's been sending me um, the links to the Monday night uh, chat, you know, the, that you all... You the cafe. Tell about yeah, the cafe. Yeah, tell about that, and then I'll tell what I've been doing there. So on uh, Monday uh, late afternoons, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time, we have the Mechanics Chess Cafe, and it's basically an open forum, open club. Uh, it's free for uh, Mechanics Institute members. And uh, you can you know, talk about whatever. You show up, you can bring a game to analyze, you can uh, tell some stories. Uh, it's an uh, hour and a half. Uh, Nick DeFermian is in there. And actually, a, a lot of our uh, players usually show up, uh, including Elliot Winslow and Mike Walder. Um, sometimes we have special guests. We had uh, John Donaldson come in and do a talk about his new book. Uh, so uh, it's... You know, it's, it's a special opportunity for uh, Mechanics members. And uh, if you're not a member of the Mechanics Institute, it's only uh, five bucks to join. Um, although Mechanics membership has its advantages. So it's something you should look into because we do have a lot of offerings at the Mechanics Institute for our players, uh, not just tournaments and not just classes, but also, uh, you know, free events, uh, you know, casual gatherings, just like the Chess Cafe. And I'm going to put a link in the chat. So if you're interested in the uh, Chess Cafe, uh, you can click on that, get some information. And uh, you can come week to week. You can come whenever you want. You're not bound to come you know, for a certain number of weeks or anything. So if you want any more information, just go to that link that's in the chat, the uh, Chess Cafe at the Mechanics Institute. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was able to drop by it yesterday, and uh, Mike Walder sent me a link, which was nice of him. I, I was already mostly done, but it was just such a great atmosphere with, you know, Mike and Nick DeFermian and Paul Whitehead and them, and, uh, and a lot of, um, is it Richard Hacka? Richard That's Hack, yeah. Hack, okay, yeah. Richard Hack. And just um, a lot of people who clearly uh, enjoyed talking with each other. But my my fun thing was like trying to stump them with trivia questions. And I think Nick DeFermian seemed to really like that and, and think it was very John Donaldson-esque of me to uh, ask <laughs> trivia questions. Yeah, John John loves the trivia. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm turning, into, turning into John Donaldson. Uh, that, that would be a, a good achievement. But... Um, I've been researching about U.S. women's chess champions, so I'm going to ask you the trivia question I asked them and see how you do, okay? Uh, let's, hey, let's, let's, let's see if I can the, do better than them. We'll ask the viewers, too. We'll ask the people sure. watching. Sure, yeah, they can enter in the chat. So who was the first U.S. woman to become a USCF master? I'm going to guess uh, Ruth Herring. No? A good guess. Let's give the chat a, like a minute or two. I'll put it in, I'll put it in the question. Sure. Who was the first U.S. woman to become a USCF master? And, uh, and we'll give them 
we'll give them a minute or so and then I'll, I'll share the answer but uh but paul got it wrong and then richard hack got it right and, and richard everyone's... hack got it right huh yeah yeah so so i think that was kind of fun because you know uh for the like just the the group to uh to try to ponder this question see here here's a situation where oh look at this game okay you know what i said that i said that white had been a, doing a good job kind of hanging in there but now uh i still think white's done a good job of hanging in there honestly i mean i guess the problem is are we forced by force losing a pawn and it's a big pawn right yeah, and, and, and the problem... How can we save it, the, right? And the additional problem for Tom Mazur is that Kyron is exceptionally strong at grinding these positions out. Um, well, I mean, it's a pretty it's a pretty nice big pawn to win because it'll, it'll be an outside pass pawn once things get traded. All right. I guess, I guess the people, the 26 people in the chat are not answering who was the first U.S. woman, not women, who was the first U.S. woman to become a USCF master. So uh, so Paul guessed Diane Sufferide, right? but she's the second one to become a USCF master. The first was Gisela Gresser. I would have never gotten that. 63. In 63? Yeah. Wow. You want to put that uh, put the answer? Nick pointed out there was only probably about twenty people who held a master title or above in '63, so it was really quite an accomplishment. Wow, and and Richard was all over it, huh? Richard got he got the player, and then I said what year, and he said 1951. I said USCF only started ratings in 1950, so he was off on the year, but he got the player. So yeah, good and job. Richard. And here, here we're back to this game with Rui, where we oh, yeah. we think we oh, think she might have had a, a mouse lip with that pawn. I'm I'm almost a hundred percent sure she had a mouse. It lip. had to have been because there's like no, no reason for that. Yeah. You know now black, I mean, now white's the one who's kind of like having to struggle a little bit, you know. So, yeah, that's just unfortunate. I mean, it seems like she's going to have to do, like, rook c1, right? Well, I mean, there is the threat of knight c2. So, yeah. Um, yeah, this this is just not looking too great for um, for for white now, unfortunately. This, it was just such a strange, you know, mouse slip. I think Elliot was saying when he was playing the arena that he mouse slipped with his queen and stalemated Wait, instead look. of... <laughs> look at look at that. She plays uh, a three. Well, because if knight c two, we can try bishop d three. That's why. So I don't think we interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Got it. I don't think we. Well, let's look at it. Knight c two, bishop d three, knight takes e three. I don't know. Yeah. I don't no. I guess we're gonna find out though. I think she's thinking she can play bishop d three, but. I don't know. And Christian plays it right away. I mean, all of this is happening, as I said, but I, I don't see, uh, like, how this is good, particularly good for White. Um, well, White is at least going to have the queen retreat. Yeah, White will have the queen retreat. Look at, check out White's pawn structure in the center. That is kind of amusing. Don't you think? Like the, di like a dying, or a yeah. uh, dying, Diamond pawn structure. There should be a name for that. Oh, someone likes my wallpaper. Unless they're liking your plain white wallpaper. I'm gonna <laughs> Oh, assume. it's not it's definitely <laughs> not mine. <laughs> I'm gonna assume that I'm the one with the cool wallpaper. Thank you. And uh Alexi Root from uh University of Texas at Dallas. Who Yes, uh, I think the wallpaper says it all. Whose team uh did well at the recently concluded uh, Pan American uh, Intercollegiate Championship, which was last week, and we actually had Alexi as a guest uh, for uh, one of the rounds for round two. And uh, but uh, not quite where you want it to be for uh, 
for the UT <laughs> Dallas team. But I mean, so so many strong, strong, strong teams uh, competing. It's it's just tough. It's a buzzsaw. Yeah, uh, obviously UT Dallas is disappointed not to qualify for the Final Four. Uh, we qualified in 17 of the last 20 years, so um, it is it is sad not to be headed to the Final Four. And uh, I know uh, we wanted to, and jumping back to uh, Jonah's game here. Oh, yeah, okay. That, okay. Oh, wow. Oh, look. Uh we have we have survived to be a piece for a pawn down. Is that no, is a, p- a full piece? A full piece. <laughs> oh, now we're a full piece down. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Hey, it's Mike Walder in the chat. And, Hi, Mike. And Mike I Walder uh, won his game yeah. against Adam Mercado in quick Congrats. fashion. Congrats. We didn't look at the game at all, Mike. I'm sure it was great though. No, but- it was it was up actually. You you were you were. You were talking, but uh, I talked over it. You talked oh, no, over it, yeah. But there uh, it is. Mike, Mike uh, Paul's internet isn't working. Paul Whitehead's internet is not working, so I get to be the guest commentator. I can't believe that the position in the Gusanov game is this. After all we saw Af- earlier. After seeing, you know, that, right? I mean, uh, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so that, well, I told you he was cashing in. Yeah, so fantastic uh, tactics from uh, Gadir, who uh, always plays some exciting chess at mechanics. And we're back to our board four with uh, Eric Yuhan Lee, Fide Master, playing Chelsea Zhu. Uh, and yeah, here is the position. Okay. So, I right, next round will I'll have to make amends and, and pay much more attention to Mike's game. I must have been blabbering uh, it, about. Yeah, but it, it, it was quick, also. Oh, it was he, quick. He okay, quick. Well, yeah. we'll we'll pay attention to him. He'll probably get a tough pairing next round too, right? Tougher, that's for sure. Tougher, yeah. Uh, so let's see what's going on in this game. So we have even material. Uh, wow. Looks like this white's pieces are a little more active. Definitely, yeah. white definitely has white more has activity. More time. <laughs> white has and, more time. And more time. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me jump over to this game with uh, Elliot Winslow. Oh yeah. Now we haven't looked at Elliot yet, have we? Or, we, we have not, or, and I think okay. unless I'm missing something, something went wrong. Because uh, he's, he's playing Nicholas uh, Nicholas Boldy, who's a tough player, right? Because I've seen him at other tournaments. Yeah, and he's you got know? he's got a brother, Ethan. Uh, yeah. And he's the higher rated one, but but Nicholas is tough too. I mean, he's a solid A player. Are they are they are they fairly young? Because you know, young players are always improving. Yeah, Nicholas is probably like. 14, 15 ish. Yeah. Maybe. Like So what's the deal here? It appears Elliot is a queen for a bishop down. Is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, and, and I wonder what, what happened. Or two because... bishops. No, he's got two bishops. He's got two bishops for the queen, right? So just going back a few moves, okay. let's see what may have happened here. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like they were repeating for a second there. Oh, wow. So he, his queen is not trapped. Not trapped. Not trapped. So he ch- he's choosing to go into this. He chose that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that, I guess wait. That's a little, queen, that's a little strange. His queen was not trapped, but was he losing his bishop if he didn't do that? Oh, uh, I wonder. Go back. Can you go back? Yeah. Home? Let's see. Maybe he was losing his bishop there. Uh, Christian Clemens says he didn't have a choice. So let's see. If, okay. So yeah. So his bishop on yeah. d4 is hanging. So that's right. He's losing a bishop with check. Okay. With thanks, check. Yeah. It took us a second to see that, but you're absolutely right. So instead of losing a bishop with check, 
he gave up his queen and got two bishops. And he, right. and he's looking at you know the activity of the two bishops and then the the rooks are stacked. But uh, this is tough. This is going to be a tough one for Elliot. Yeah, yeah. I guess it will be. That's interesting. So he must have just missed bishop e two that tactic. You know. Well, then now we got to deal with this one right here. Rook c six. Oh, well, yeah. That forces rook f six, right? Yeah. But then maybe then when there's going to be trading and that's probably better for white. Uh definitely. Yeah. Oh no, poor Elliot. So he's he's got to work this one out, but let's let's go back to this game between okay. Kyron Griffith and uh Tom Azer. Okay, well we were predicting that Kyron would be a pawn up and there's his pawn. There's his past pawn. That's her pawn. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And the thing is that um, maybe, you know, whenever he pushes it, if there's a trade, then his king runs in faster. I guess that's the whole concept we have going here. So maybe he, yeah, there it goes. Okay, so he can't trade because then the king runs in faster. But now his king's tied down right. and the black king is just going to walk right in there. So this is looking pretty good for Kyron, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess I guess Kyron's going to try, or I guess White's going to try Rook G5. Yeah, Christian, I agree that um, they're putting up some good resistance. I, I actually, earlier, I liked the way Tom was playing. Um, and Jonah certainly was hanging tough against a ton of sacrifices. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that had to have been brutal for Jonah to to try to work that out and you know. Yeah, but he did pretty well. I mean, he did. you know, just relentless. It was a game it's to be proud of. And and even the thought process because he thought to give that sacrifice back to try to get I some I remember play that and, with Bishop F2. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is definitely I agree. This is hanging tough. We have a threat of rook, rook G5 here for white. So that's why Kyron is now thinking it's like rook g5 what do i do you know and uh moving back to this game with uh rui yang yan and christian jensen uh rui is trying to figure this out and uh well i mean now for whatever reason black has played very slowly um so maybe that'll help help her you know and now also white is white is starting to do some attacks here. Rook h2 is maybe picking up the h pawn back, or maybe uh, we play queen g3 check. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Queen g4, queen g3 check, I guess. And then we defend our h pawn. Okay. I wonder if we can, if we're as white, if we're interested in just making a trying to make a draw here with like rook g2 i i i doubt it i doubt that rui would be satisfied with that well uh, uh, unless she thought she was losing but like i don't think she thinks she's like lost you think i mean she's still i don't know she's, she she's the, so aggressive like she's she a, played the rook g2 so let's see what happens i mean because look she's a she lost a pawn by a mouse slip Yes. And maybe getting a draw out of I, I I just do not see a player like Rui she, doing that. Let's they've already repeated once. Let's just see. You know. <laughs> if they repeat a bunch you know, three times, then she's like saying, Oops, I lost a pawn, I'm just gonna they, get out of this. They game. haven't repeated this rook g two position yet. Well, if he if if one plays rook h two queen g three, that'll be a rep repetition. Well, right? we'll see. I I do not see Rui. I, okay. I, I, I think, All right. I think Rui's looking to just go for the kill in some there, way. The knight on f eight is defending that g six pawn though, so I don't know. I think, I think if I fight, I might repeat. She's looking f four and f five and f six and. F seven and right. F eight and everything. Okay. Let's go all, all right. the way. <laughs> Let's go all the way. Yeah. Score I that mean, touchdown. Yeah, we'll we'll see. Whoa, look at this game over here. This okay. is Nicholas Wang. Uh we have not seen this game yet. Or all right, this is a new did. one up for us. Okay. 
This is uh, Nicholas Wang against uh, Sanjeev Anand. All right, and it, this is interesting. It looks like white is probably doing okay. Let me count the material here, four, six, okay. Yeah, I mean, white's pawn on C6 is really um, restricting black, and it looks like um, the black king is not that happy either. I, I would, I would prefer white in this position. <clears throat> yeah, black's position looks pretty tough, actually. Yeah. Let's uh, let's check on Eric Lee's game here. Okay, is that one we've seen? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, this one. Okay. Oh yeah, this is the one where White had more time and nicer pieces, and White still has more time and nicer pieces. So. Um, maybe that's enough to, to win. <laughs> let me uh, let me let me jump real quick to Elliot's game as. Uh, oh right, Let's see if Elliot tricked him into something. <laughs> okay, did we we got to trade off a pair of rooks? Okay, so interesting. So Elliot now has three pawns. I think before Elliot had not uh, one pawn. Uh, did Elliot gain a pawn since the last time we looked? It looks like he might have actually. That I yeah. think it was the pawn on F two. So he yeah. So he gained a pawn. I mean, every little bit helps when you giving up your queen, right? So. And Jonah Bush is in the chat. A fantastic, oh, fantastic game. Gonzaga, uh, fun to watch. Oh, yeah. Be proud of that game because that was uh, hey, yeah, it was more than a moral victory. It was uh, it was a better than that. It was it was a whole lot of fun to watch. Yeah, Jonah, we're, I was predicting it's definitely going to be annotated by Nick DeFermian for the newsletter. It was yeah. super interesting. And uh, good resources, uh, being resourceful. Uh, yeah, no, that was that was, that was a great game. <laughs> yeah great game very exciting to watch so what do we think of Elliot's game here is it white to move here it is black to move black to move okay so Elliot is thinking and he's got seven minutes so still plenty of time <clears throat> well you know Jonah it's interesting because uh White was sacrificing a lot against you, and then you were sacrificing back. It was a really very exciting game. So Jonas say, I've seen club players beat GM and stuff because of an unsound sacrifice. And you never, <laughs> you never know, and especially with Gadir, you know, as strong a GM as he is, uh, uh, he made a bad move in the Donaldson Championship against uh, Alan Finkelstein, who's you know a two thousand rated player, and he was able to hold that off to a draw. But I mean, he, he had a, a a totally lost game. And uh, wow, well, uh, Mike Walder, who's in the chat, also is winning against Gadir. Yeah, and off so it draw. can ha it can happen, right? It, it can, can happen. All right. But, uh, I think Gadir was in control of that, that last game. I mean, uh, but Jonah made it interesting for those counter sacrifices. Those were those were a lot of fun. And, and oh, that, as this is Kyron's game. Yeah, yeah. and this this is uh, right at Jonah. Thank you. This, Great game. This is sort of book right here, isn't it? Yeah, it definitely is sort of book. It might be a building a bridge, a Lucena position. How fun! Those I, of you that teach chess I, probably have taught this. I actually uh, just learned that like four or five years ago. That's okay. Whenever yeah. you learn it, it's great. No, but it's I fun mean, now because like, you know. I love the metaphor, the building a bridge. Yeah. So I, it's really fun. And it was funny because uh, I learned it sort of by accident. I was, uh, I was at uh, Grandmaster... Christian Carilla's place when he was in the Bay Area and uh, he had a student and I was waiting for him because we were going to go play basketball and uh, so he was done with his lesson and that position was on the board where he was teaching a student and 
I said, uh, oh, you know, is this a win? Is this a draw? And then he goes, you know, it's the, you know, it's the Lucina position. And I go, oh, so this is a force win, like a pattern? And he's like, yeah, you have to build a bridge. And then he, oh, he, yeah, showed, he, he showed me right there how to do it. And, and you know, after that, I, you know, when I've seen it in games, I've sort of got, I've known the idea of what you need to do. Yeah, and, this looks like a textbook Lucena position. I and, think, uh, yeah. I think it, and I think White has just recognized that. And, nice with yeah. Byron. And Tom Azer resigns. Yeah, well, I mean, that was, that was really a, it was a good game by Tom, though. Um, as Christian Clemens was saying, Jonah and Tom played tough against their opponents, so good for them. And actually, um, Lex is in the chat about uh, Elliot's games. Let's go to that. Well, Just... yeah, no, he, how is he looking at Elliot's game? I guess he's on chess.com looking at it. We, we don't Yeah, because you can follow, uh, as long as you know people's usernames, you can follow oh, their right. games. All right, so yes, Elliot is in a bit of trouble because now we're like going to play Queen E5 and Queen G7 mate or something yeah, or the, four trades. Oh no, that, poor Elliot. That rook getting to C7 is... Yeah, uh, I mean, rook on the seventh is a, an issue. Following up by Queen E5 is, is going to be pretty hard to deal with for, for Black and Black's pawn has not made an impression yet, that D pawn. So that's, you know, Elliot played the end of the arena tonight. Maybe he was uh, <laughs> had a little bit too much chess or something going into this. You know, because I think, I think if you play like speed chess right before a serious game, it can maybe affect your rhythm. Oh, hey, congratulations, hey, Kyron. Hey, Kyron, before, since you're here, um... Do you have any IM norms currently? Because uh, we were mentioning that you'll be playing in Charlotte at an IM norm tournament next week. And I thought you had one. So, all right, yeah. Yep, one norm. Right. Well, wow, good 2015. Luck. 2015. And, yeah, good luck. Get another norm. And that we, would be so cool. we, we were talking. We were saying, you know what? We would love that kind of... Uh, all the practice and all the games for mechanics are going to benefit you at a norm tournament and because uh, uh, everyone will be uh, feel a little fresh and uh, you've been playing uh, top level chess so we will be rooting for you uh, next week and uh, hopefully you get, get that second norm get that third norm and, and it's interesting instead of playing queen e5 like Kyron and I both mentioned white chose queen e6, which is actually perhaps not quite as good because now we don't have like queen, well, maybe it'll all be the same, but. And uh, yeah. white is gonna have to be careful, does not get into like a time crunch. Um, you know, I mean, two bishops are two bishops and you know, Funny, mm -hmm. funny things can happen if uh, moves go wrong. Yeah, it's true. I, I mean, Queen E five, we would we would have a little more options now than we do on E six, but I'm sure there's still somewhere good we can put our queen now. You know, yeah. So Kyron and I both like Queen E five more than Queen E six, but I mean, surely we can we can fix our our ways here. Like I don't know. Queen F five and like regroup. So we'll keep an eye on this one, but let me flip to uh, Rui's game. Okay. Oh yeah, this is the one where you were sure she wasn't yeah, going to take a draw. She's not going to take a draw. You she... were right. She did not. She did not repeat. And honestly, though, I think uh, I think Black's doing fine, except for not having, uh, except for having like one minute and forty five seconds. Other than that, I think Black's okay here. What about uh, what about a move like F five? What about F five? Uh, you thought she was playing checkers with the pawn. Uh, I mean, I'm actually. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a little scary because. Um, 
I don't know. F5 is not... I'm more worried about, I don't know, something... You like F5 too, Mike? Okay, I'll bow to all the pressure of F5. I think there's other ideas too. But the, the idea is to play Rook H2. Well, I mean, yeah, like... I think I think uh, I think things like work F three also might be strong, but okay oh, F five. Yeah, um, all right. So after F five, what should we do? Um, and she's she's thinking about options here for sure, and she has the time yeah. to do it. He does have the time to do it. That's true. I feel like Black maybe had went astray a little bit because I, I don't I don't I think there should have been a more options here. Yeah, Rui was allowed to bring those rooks together like that. Um mm -hmm. uh, good. Kyron mentioned Rook F three. I did like Rook F three. Well, I mean maybe how does White save the Queen? And, White save the Queen or Black save the Queen? Probably and, Black save the And F five was played and Christian Jensen a minute and a half on the clock. Yeah, and, that's not... And in the game with Elliot, uh, they agreed to a draw. Really? <laughs> nice. So I guess, I guess uh, you know, having that I am title can work in your, work in your favor. Yeah, this, this may have been one of those moments. <clears throat> and... Uh, and he got out, but uh, congrats to uh, Nicholas Boldy, regardless, because yeah, uh, sure. had to had to work that out. Well, I mean, yeah, he got he got that tactic to to put Elliot in this kind of position. And back to Rui's game here. Mm -hmm. We think Rui uh, had a mouse slip earlier in the game, and I I do think so. It had well, it had to turned it around. That was on move eighteen. Uh, she gave yeah, up. Yeah, maybe go back and ask Kyron if he thinks it's a mouse slip. <laughs> yeah, a hey, Kyron. Kyron uh, and Mike. Because I think it was a mouse slip, but maybe they'll be like, oh no, it was uh, a deep uh, uh, All right. Yeah, because we, we, okay, we could be wrong. Kyron, we could be Kyron, wrong, right? We could be wrong. Kyron and Mike, we think this is a mouse slip. What do you guys think? So here's what happened. Okay, is that a mouse slip? King H1 instead of King H2. Or was that, that a was that a long term okay. sacrifice? Yeah. Okay. Good. Kyron, Kyron agrees. So we're not crazy. We thought it was a mouse slip. And, and we and Black's doing fine and here. And Rui won. <laughs> well, thank you, Kyron. Yeah, we think it was a mouse slip, but obviously she she turned it around and made the best. She of it. she won the game. Uh, her opponent. Yeah, what happened? Her opponent like, flagged. Oh. Oh no! He just flagged. He just uh, flagged, it and 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 something had to have happened there. Well, uh, the bad internet, maybe bad internet, like Paul. By the way, those of you who were looking for Paul Whitehead, he had bad internet, so I'm stepping in and substituting. But uh, the computer analysis shows Rui up three point five. Oh, okay. So well, it, it just shows after a mouse slip, hang in there. Yeah. Yes, yes, something happened. But Rui, you know, f found uh, ways to fight back and uh, got a favorable position. And she's just not of the kind that would look to uh, uh, take a draw. And Judith, if uh, you are watching, are there any more games still going? I'm, I'm looking at the results. Wow, if they're not, then this round went by super fast for me. No, there's, there's still quite a few games, but uh, uh, yeah. most, mostly okay. on the low, lower. So let me look at, uh, wow, Daniel Smiley. Oh, let, me, let me find one game here that could be interesting. Please, let's see. Nope, that game over. Maybe that one's over. Tejas Mahesh is still playing. <clears throat> Let me see. Five more games according to Judith. Whoa, I don't know what happened there. That is, uh, that's Elliot. <laughs> no, that's Elliot playing a random speed game. Oh, that's game. his arena game. And there's Rika's checkmate. We're revisiting that. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
And this is a current game going on between... Uh, it's interesting. I don't think I've seen Rika play in a while. Maybe now that she's gotten into Oxford, she has time to uh, play some chess tournaments. Or maybe she got into Oxford and said, hey, I'm so happy I'm going to play some chess. Yeah. When well, I you know, like you don't have... Yeah, it can take like a little break. <clears throat> Relax. This looks... Uh, Well, okay, so white's a piece up, right? Yeah, yep. But maybe black can do a perpetual or something here. Well, no, he just plays queen g2, no? Oh, and yeah. then queen e3. I mean, it seems like it seems like black can at least have some fun checking for a little while. Maybe like another move. <laughs> there you go, and then it, like if. King F H one, maybe we try Rook F two and like just uh, keep trying to check. Can't hurt. Rook F two, maybe <laughs> just just keep trying to do something. Yeah, look at that. Oh, you like Rook F three instead of Rook F two? Okay, well. Guess what? Black didn't choose rook f2 or rook f3. Black chose rook f4. I liked rook f2. And uh, a few minutes left <clears throat> for both players. But yeah, honestly, Kyron's right. I mean, the position is a little dangerous for white because, uh, you know, the king is so exposed. Rook, at, rook h4 is a, a nasty threat. So, like, what do we do about rook h4? <laughs> Maybe we have to play queen h2? Oh, and that's why Chiron liked rook f3, is because of queen h2. In that case, we have rook h3. So, um, yeah, I agree, Chiron. Like, rook. Wow. But now, since the rook's on f4, Chiron, can't we try queen h2? Oh, he's giving us a whole line. Okay, so queen h2, queen f3 check, king g1, rook g4. Yeah, wow. So white is in a little bit of trouble, no matter what. So we'll, yeah. we'll keep an eye on you know it. That's a really good lesson. Just because you're a piece up, you can't like uh, just take it for granted. You have to really uh, hang in there and <coughs> win the game. And this is uh, Sebi Suarez against uh, Ramachita in the under 1800 section. Sebi likes to come into chat, right? Can yes, he does. He definitely does. Yeah. And the reason we haven't seen him is because he's still playing his game. Oh, right. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, Sebi would we, be. We would have heard from him for sure. <laughs> That's great. He's. It looks like he's up. up you know, we featured his game. We can tell him later, right? That's right. Oh, and Chiron says that bishop takes h7 was possible there. Oh, right, because you have like queen f5 picking up the piece uh, back in the, immediately. So, but this, yeah, I mean, this this also looks okay. Sure, like black doesn't seem to have any good checks right now. Yeah, it does not look good. And this is good news. and this is another game going on in. Uh, in the top section, this is uh, Philip Gerstoff playing white against uh, a mechanics uh, regular of the live Tuesday Night Marathons, David Askin. Oh. Uh, Mike says our video keeps pausing. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh is all I have That's to say. That's not good. That's not good. Paul, uh, Paul Whitehead, like, had to leave <laughs> his video pausing, so hopefully we're not, like, victims of this internet curse tonight and paul will be back for the second round and uh hopefully oh, good. All, all good with the uh with the net yeah maybe uh yeah who knows my internet seems to be working fine thank goodness yay all right whoops the game switched ah the game switched again or switched colors okay well, so some a queen yeah, it looks like Tay just made something happen. Let's go back. Uh, this is what we were looking at. Check. Thank you, thank you for telling us in the chat that the only person the video is not working for is Mike Walder. So. <laughs> good. <laughs> good, to that, that good. good to know. Good to know. 
Oh, someone mouse slipped their queen. Oh, oh that no. was Vishva, Vishva Nanaganda. Oh, oh no. Man, tough one, man. We've seen some mouse slips tonight, that's for sure. Oh, uh, you, you were playing uh, a strong player, though, Steve Gaffigan, who's uh, another mechanics regular. And Tejas Mahesh looks like he has worked it out. Congrats to him. Looks like uh, he will close the show. Yeah, I mean, uh, white has a little more play, but it's looking good for black. And uh, also... Wow, when... this looks like a kind of strong check, but what do we do next here? Um, it is just one check. Yeah, it is just one check. How is black following this up? Bringing the pawns. Yeah, I don't know. And... That... that... H three actually is perhaps not so not much in trouble there. <laughs> Might be Black who's going to have some trouble. Seconds on the clock. Mike, you're the only one who's having video trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you better you better check your internet connection before your next round. Are you at Paul Whitehead's place? Yeah, exactly. Paul, Paul had to skip this first round due to internet troubles. Uh-oh. Both players under 10 and... Oh! Yeah. Man. Both players... Oh, there we go. He... Well, why did a lot of pressure there? Yeah. There was, yeah, there was nothing you could do. Yeah, it was going to happen. Tough, uh, tough loss for uh, David Askin there. Oh, and Judith has told us we are all done with the first round. Fantastic. Uh, round one is in the books, and in a few minutes we'll have the updated uh, standings for... Uh, she says three minutes. Three we minutes. We'll start <laughs> on you now, Judith. The clock is on. <laughs> if anyone has clock a chess clock, good. turn it yeah. on. And... Uh, we've got... We've got Abel, we've got 38 viewers. Yeah, Thank welcome everyone. You. This is uh, round one of the Mechanics Institute January 2021 Tuesday Night Marathon. It's a mechanics tradition. Uh, if we were live, we would be at the Mechanics Institute Chess Club in downtown San Francisco uh, playing this out. But the state of the world being what it is, we are doing this online, but one of the really cool things is that uh, so many, I would say about 75% of our usual players are playing online here in the Tuesday Night Marathon, uh, or have played in the last, uh, you know, over the course of the last, you know, nine months. And uh, it's a lot of fun just to see our regulars. And then just by continuing through our uh, Twitch coverage, uh, it's just staying engaged with all our players. Uh, you know, we look forward to uh, Tuesday nights. And uh, oh, Christian Clemens saying tonight is the end of your six-year streak. Your streak. Oh, that's sad. He's, but you know, he can't, he apparently can't stay away because <clears throat> he's here with us in the chat, right? Is, so it's kind of like he's participating, but, which is not a thing. But it's sort. You know, can we say it still counts? Because he's playing the Thursday night marathon. That's right, and that right. used to not exist. It's it's still a night marathon, so. Uh, but the, the thing yeah. is, is he was he was playing the Tuesday night marathon. It's not sleep issue because, uh, you know, the Tuesday night marathon at Mechanics would go till ten thirty, ten forty five. I'm guessing Christian must have a conflict on one of the yeah, Tuesdays. Yeah, yeah, or or now because of work or something. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, and and our Thursday night marathon starts this Thursday also. Five rounds, uh, one round a week, so it'll be through uh, February and, or January and February. So uh, if you just can't get enough of marathon chess or mechanics chess, uh, we're still taking registrations for the Thursday night marathon. Uh, Six thirty p.m. Pacific start time. Game in sixty plus five. And and there's Sebi. <laughs> Yeah, and Christian, thank you for being a spectator. It really, as someone who's commentating, it's really fun to read the chat. So thank you. And Sebi, oh, we yeah, watched. Yeah. We watched your game. Yeah, yeah, we we watched you Life. get it done. And Vishva also playing the Thursday night marathon. 
All right, and apparently round uh, the pairings have been posted for round two, Ooh, which starts again? at 8 p.m. Okay. Uh, and uh, let me see. Actually, let me see if I can yeah, just Yeah, we should, pull we it should up bring here. them up so we can comment on our the upcoming pairings. Yeah, why not? Our... Let's see. Let's see. Now people can see uh, how you look them up here. Go to the page and uh, scroll all the way down like we were telling Elliot scroll earlier. Scroll down and there you can see it. Grandmaster Alexander Lenderman against Steve Gaffigan. Uh, oh, wow. Tejas Mahesh and Gadir Gusenov. This will be an interesting matchup on board three. Kyron Griffith against Arthur Liu. Now Arthur Liu has uh, been a, a tournament director. Uh, he's uh, directed some of our events at Mechanics. Uh, uh, you know, fantastic tournament director, and he helped out at the uh, at the Pan Am. So, oh, wow. so yeah, nice to have him. Natish Nathan against Eric Lee. Uh, wow, Max Howe against Rui. That'll that'll be something. And Nathan Fong Go Bears against Ethan Boldy. Uh, Mike Walder, Ethan Gould, uh, Elliot Winslow against Sanji Vanon, William Sartorio. There it is. It goes on and on. Let me scroll down a little bit. And uh, we can see uh, the under 1800 section also. Aaron Nikoski against Ian Lau. Andrew Ballantyne and Matteo Hansen. Actually, that'll, that'll be a fun one. Uh, David Rakonitz against Ethan Sun. And Reka Stare against Sevi Suarez. Uh, we'll definitely be following that match. <laughs> So, yeah, that's right, Sebby. You'll be in the spotlight. Yeah, and uh, you'll be uh, uh, chief organ uh, organizer. And TD Judith will be uh, have an eye on that game. So, <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So we're gonna have some uh, fun chess to look over, uh, starting in round two, which starts in about nine minutes. All right. Nine minutes. Cool. So thank you, everyone, for uh, uh, tuning in and watching. You the, know, the Abel, marathon. this might be a good time for you to tell us what's coming up this weekend for mechanics. Is there is there some action this weekend? Uh, the action we have is a scholastic action. Uh, we have a, uh, a Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Uh, tournament on Saturday at 3 p.m. So if uh, you're a scholastic player, usually we, the, the players that play that are rated uh, under 1,400. Uh, we have that. But uh, other than that, I mean, it's pretty quiet. I mean, we're, we're, uh, uh, we're sort of appreciating the break, especially after all the time we put in with the Pan Am. Uh, but what we do have coming up, which would be uh, great to uh, announce and plug, is uh, Mechanics Institute is organizing the 2021 U.S. Amateur Team West Championship. So that, that'll be January 30th through 31st. And uh, Oh, my gosh. You know what I love about that tournament? I wonder if you all are doing it. Are you going to have a best team name contest? We do. And actually, the, oh, that's great. the winners of last year's best team name uh, have registered already. So... Uh, they're going to be part of the Amateur West. And uh, uh, a USCF email blast is going out across the country soon. One of the cool things about uh, getting the bid for this event is we get a free promo uh, nice. uh, to send that. So we're kind of, you know, all the amateur team championships are going to be held online, obviously. Uh, I'm, I'm curious if there's going to, hey, and Paul Whitehead has joined us. I'm Yay. I'm curious if there's going to be any teams that are going to look to play all four of the events. I'm sure there will. And uh, team players get really excited about the whole team concept. Yeah, I figure. I go this 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 would be sort of the opportunity to you know if you want to try doing something like that. This is the year, right? Absolutely, sure. Oh, what? I mean, even teams in the in-person years that will travel to more than one of them so there we go online you don't need to travel how's it going paul uh, all Amy, right um, i i used uh, my phone as a mobile hotspot 
There you go. That's going to work. Who, who, who taught you how to do that? I taught myself. Did you? Yeah. Good job. That's great, Paul. But it's yeah, I'm wondering if I should do that as the. G I'm wondering if I should, if it works, if I should just use do that as the d default now on when I'm. But doesn't that use um, that use up all your minutes or something or? It does. Well, not not all. Uh, of it, I have but. a flat. Uh, I just still having some issues there though. <laughs> flat rate plan oh, okay that it says my internet is unstable uh -oh. yeah you, fr oh, you, no. you, you you did freeze up a little bit actually able uh, from what i'm seeing so i'm it's wondering only half, if it's, half of our it faces. doesn't seem to matter there we go able are you redoing the screen for us i am Sharp. Yay. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Hang in here with us and not keep freezing. For those who were wondering why I was here, Paul was having internet problems, which we are hoping he has solved. But perhaps not. We'll see. We'll see. We'll it'll see, be, we'll it'll see. be one of the things we can commentate on. There we go. And I'm fixing uh, the Paul's name here. But uh, like, did, why did, am I commenting on last week's games? Did you <laughs> did you catch any of the the round? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I was watching. There I think Elliot are. got very lucky. I think the opponent was winning at the at when they agreed to a draw. Yeah, I think he. Uh, I think Nicholas was happy that hey, I got this result here. Uh, you know, in in you know. It wasn't, it wouldn't have, well, I guess it could have been an easy win, but I could see from Nicholas's vantage point that, you know, it didn't seem like a straight ahead easy win and uh, got the draw against I think an Hiram iron. pointed out, yeah, no, I think Hiram pointed out a, a win at the end there. Yeah. And then uh, Steve. Well, let's see how my internet, let's see how my internet, um, does and uh, yeah. I'll bow out if it's if it's. Um, and hopefully it'll horrible. hang in there. Hopefully it'll hang in there. Yeah, because we got some uh, great matchups in this round that we're looking forward Who's to. Who's playing who? Alexander Lenderman is playing Steve Gaffigan on board one, and then. Now that's an interesting. Gaffigan's a good player. Yeah, yeah, he he can uh, he can throw, and then uh, Tejas Mahesh on board two against Gadir. And then uh, Kyron Griffith playing Arthur Liu, who uh, Judith and I know really well, and he's uh, TD. Actually, you might know him too. He's TD'd at Mechanics a few times a year and a half ago. Yeah, I think I do know him. And yeah. uh, Eric Lee's playing Natish Nathan, and uh, Ru Rui is playing Eric Lee. Rui's playing Max Howe. So uh, that'll be interesting. Now, aren't they? They're both really young, right? Max Howe and Rui. Aren't yes. They both Yes, yes. Okay, and, Eric. and Eric and Atish are also. So, like, the kids oh, are, wow. are. And then Reka Starry. The kids are all right. The kids are all right. And Reka <laughs> is playing uh, Sebi Suarez. So. Now, uh, Reka is a senior in high school because she's headed off to Oxford. Uh, what about Sebi? Do we know what year he is in school? Um. We don't, but I think he's like 13 or so. Okay. Or, or, or I wonder younger, actually. Uh, but I believe he was a, he's a student of uh, Carla, if I remember oh, right. Okay. Uh, woman Grandmaster, oh, well, Carla Heredia. We were talking about upcoming events. Do you have any ongoing classes? Um, um, my Endgame lab starts tomorrow. And uh, um, yeah, that that's one of the popular classes because uh, who doesn't need to work on their end games? <laughs> I certainly do. I mean, I've actually um, uncovered some uh, bad thinking on my own part during my end game lab. So, um, so uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good class. It's um, 
it's the uh, I think this is a third go around for it and um, yeah. trying to going to try to improve on it every time and so. uh, Rick is requesting she be uh, known as Reka not Judith's daughter so <laughs> You yeah, know, all that all that turns around because I mean, I know when my kids got to be a certain age, then I would just be known as their mom, like, like you know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, isn't Judah well, pa as, well, like his mom? Well, pa well, parent parents go so, through that because it, yeah, that's what happens. So. Yeah, yeah. So, Rake is, Reka's mom, Judith, is what we'll be doing. It'll be that way. I remember when I was in uh, junior high or even elementary school with regards to my son, uh, I was always G uh, Gabe's dad. Like, hey. Exactly. That's like like the kids would say, hey, Gabe's dad. Hey, hey Gabe's exactly. dad. Exactly. So, so it, it, it turns around the other way. Is, uh, you know, especially if you have a kid that your kid was probably like doing a lot in school and so then they become the famous one and you become their dad that's your identity sounds about right yeah like way I'm sure, of the world i'm sure paul that your 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 uh, your mom just became known as uh, you know the whitehead's mom right maybe at some point to some yeah. people yeah mm -hmm. around mechanics probably anyway so a the, long time ago. Okay, yeah. so Judith is saying it is showtime. So okay. as the games come up, uh, I will actually let me. All right, let me know how my lag is. We'll, we'll we'll let you know how bad you're lagging. Yes. All right. Let's see. There it is. Boom. So this will be round two of the Tuesday Night Marathon. And this is our top board, Alexander Lenderman, who is going to be in the U.S. Championship. That's right. Won, uh, won the final spot uh, by uh, defeating Christopher Yu in an Armageddon match. And Alexander's played in the U.S. Championship before. Oh, yes. So uh -huh. really a, a, a big honor to have such a strong player headlining your Tuesday night event. And we're waiting for his first move, and there it is. All right. And uh, And who's Carbon 64 again? Steve Gaffigan. Oh, that's right. Well, he's gonna he's gonna need some. Um, some extra carbon. He's gonna need some uh, <laughs> carbon fourteen or what? Carbon? <laughs> some dead? Is there a deadly carbon? Actually, Judith should know. Yeah. <laughs> She's a chemist. That's right. If Judith is in the That's right. Like what? What's, what's the best carbon to have, Judith? Carbon fourteen or this tricky Bishop G five stuff? Was this Trumpowski? Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. And um, I'm looking at... Who's on board two? Board two is Gadir Guseyanov playing black against uh, Tejas Mahesh, volunteer at the Mechanics Institute. Oh, wow. What is he volunteer doing? Uh, so primarily, uh, when we have to submit the games to uh, Ken Regan for fair play, uh, he's able to take the PGNs and uh, uh, because we have to update the PGNs with their USCF rating, not their oh. not their Chess.com rating, and so uh, he inputs the the ratings for for the games so that when Ken has them, he has the most accurate data. In terms of player rating, uh, for him to do his analysis. So. Well, that's a nice volunteer job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of a, of a different sort usually, right, than what you see. No, but, but that that saves you a lot of clerical work. Yeah, so. it's important. Yeah, very important. Yeah. So board three, let's just take a look. See, Ky Fide Master Kyron Griffith and Arthur Liu. All the games just fell out of this opening. 
He did what? Oh, and this is the uh, Dutch defense or something. That is correct. Dutch. It, it says Dutch defense hopped in attack. And now, um, yeah, White's playing with knight c3 and probably aiming for a quick e4. Actually, let me fix something. I agree with that. I mean, that, that, and that's what was played, too. Well, the players are playing quickly, so I guess they know what they're doing. <laughs> We're going to give the benefit of the doubt there. Yeah. There we go. Updating the round. You've got to like white in this position, just structurally in the E file. And does black really want to trade on F3? Uh, Let's uh, peek at uh, Rui's game against uh, Max Howe. Oh, yeah. We were talking about that pairing earlier. This, uh, how old is Max? How old is Max? Like 14 or so? I, I think everyone's 14. I, I feel like I've been saying what, whatever, the, what's their age. Um, um, my default seems to be 14. So, And and he's changed his username yet again. <laughs> well, Max is Max, right? What the don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> you know... Uh, there was someone who had the actual last name of Bai, B-Y-E, and back in the old days when pairings were written up on the wall, you know, and you see that you were playing someone named Bai, you would think you had a Bai, but actually it was a person, so it was very confusing. Whoa. That's a chess story for you. Yeah, but it's kind <laughs> of like these days it doesn't work, but it works better as an in-person joke. So here's this game. Nitish Nathan uh, is white against Fide Master Eric Yuhan Lee. Well, I think white's doing okay for for themselves right now against a Fide yeah, Master. Yeah, this is one of those um, uh, Black has played C4 maybe a little prematurely, and White's going to try to bust it up with E4 pretty quickly here, if he can. Yeah, but I mean, that's that's good that White's doing okay against an FM, right? Like, I assume White's the lower-rated player. Yeah, but White is like an almost 2,000 player. Oh, okay. So they're looking to... They're not scared, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, and, and and I think these players know each other. They're both from around here, Bay Area. So, but look at look at this game with uh, Tejas Mahesh and Gusainov. Oh yeah, our four two battle. You know, Gusainov's had some pretty exciting chess already tonight. Yeah, so. hey, Paul, did you catch that game with uh, Gusainov and Jonah Bush? That crazy. Yeah, I mean Jonah was lost out of, after Bishop H seven check. I think Gusainov probably could have finished him off quicker. Yeah, th there's probably multiple ways, um, but man, it, it was action. It had a fireworks. Action sure. chess. Yeah. This is this is going badly for White. This opening, I think. Yeah, that um, with pretty strong, huh? Black having this nice d4 square and I mean it's going to be a, it's going to be a struggle for white to to hold this these kind of structures where one player has the d4 square and the other player doesn't have the d5 square um, tend to be difficult for the white side if you ever tempted to play into this kind of thing, don't do it. <laughs> warning, warning. Switching to board one with uh, Lenderman and Gaffigan.
All right, well, I mean, this is probably just some kind of normal opening, right, Paul? Yeah. Um, I might be having some lag, but um, yeah, Lenderman is specializes in these kind of simple positions and then, uh, you know, I like the fact for black that his bishop's outside the pawn structure, but I mean, white might try something like knight h4 at some point to try to gain the two bishops. Mm -hmm. But still, like, you know, Lenderman is very good at dis these deceptively simple positions. Let's uh, take a peek at Mike Walder. Oh, yes, I need to pay attention this time. Who is but that? I overlooked his entire first round. And he is playing uh, Ethan Gold. He's playing under his own name, not Flights of Fancy. Look at that. It's uh, it's sort of set up. Uh, Judith does this so that where possible we can see the name. Actually, no, no. He's playing under his own name, which is different. Because I notice all the other players. Um, oh, do they show the name? Let me see. Let me see. Username. Yeah, no, it's showing the the usernames. So. Well, this is typical Mike Walder in a Sicilian defense. So we know he knows it really well, right? Look at that A four. Whenever he's on a Sicilian defense, black or white. <clears throat> what do you think, um, Paul, that that black will do after a4? That's actually a good question. Well, I guess we answered it. We're going to take the, take the bishop. And then I guess maybe play b4, right? And then pawn to b4, and then hey, wins the e pawn. Yeah, I said b4, so there you go. Now we just have to see if Mike agrees. Mike just wins here with knight b3 and pawn b4. There you go. The called it. it wins the e pawn, right? Yeah. So that's, that's pretty simple. Then black has a beautiful looking position. Maybe even after bishop takes e4, the c pawn will go too. That that as well, yeah. I mean, but oh, the e4 pawn that. is just going for nothing. Well, is... Yeah, but what I'm saying is the c pawn might be next on the list. Yeah, the c2 pawn is. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's just uh, you can't it's... afford to overlook this kind of thing. Right. No, so a4 just... was a blunder, which I think able it kind of. Kind yeah. Of you weren't expecting it and there's a reason for that apparently it was a terrible move <laughs> <laughs> it's like we didn't expect it because it was shouldn't have been played all winning out of hand here all right so now we're on a different game yeah we're back to eric lee and uh, nitish <clears throat> looks like black's gonna have a nice little queen side over there no I still think white's doing okay here. Uh, well, it's black's turn, so, but still. Yeah. Well, I think white's okay. Yeah, black is black is good here. Well, don't you, I think white's okay too. You have ideas like queen g4, right? At some point. Yeah, but I'm telling yeah, if white can get in e4, I mean, it's gonna be the queen side versus the center. Mm -hmm. You don't think that uh, queen g4 has any potential? Oh, well, okay. I get f6 driving us away. Yeah. And for the viewers out there, if uh, you love team chess, uh, the Mechanics Institute is organizing the 2021 U.S. Amateur Team West uh, online. So uh, we are going to be the first uh, U.S. Amateur Team event. Uh, January 30th through the 31st. 
Uh, I put the link in the chat. So uh, if you have uh, three others with you uh, and want to play some team chess, this is going to be the first year where it's entirely doable that teams can play all four events if they really want to go crazy. Uh, but uh, U.S. Amateur Team West, January 30th through 31st. Registration is open and all the information is there. Uh, any questions, just shoot us an email. But uh, we're really excited, especially off the heels of the Pan Am. That was a lot of fun to watch and be a part of. And now you can play in a team tournament. You don't even have to be in college. <laughs> Anybody can do it. Average team rating must be under 2,200. So you can have Alexander Lenderman on your team. You're just going to have to have some lower rated players to offset the damage he does to the uh, average rating. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny you said that because I, I, I was watching the Pan Am commentary and someone said in chat, oh, I want to play in the event, but I'm not in college. So what you say is true. Now there's their, the chances coming up to play in a team event. Oh, it was so much fun. We did it last year uh, near nearby San Francisco by the airport. Uh, and we were sort of lucky because it was in February, mid-February. And uh, we got that event in with like 280 players, and, and we got it right before like all the shutdown. Um, yeah, and, that was amazing. And it was a fantastic event. And uh, we're, we're hoping everyone comes back and plays it online because uh, we'll be doing the pairings uh, manually. Judith's uh, organizing the event. Uh, John McComsky is going to be the computer TD and. Uh, uh, Martha Underwood will be uh, helping us also. So uh, we're going to have a great team and uh, we'll, we'll put on a great uh, team experience for everyone. And uh, we hope to see a lot of people there online playing with us. This Are you going to do some uh, Twitch commentary on oh, it like you did for uh, a Absolutely, for sure. We'll be covering oh, that's exciting. every round. We'll have uh, Nick also with us. And uh, so, yeah, and it's and not that far away. Just uh, three weeks or so, or less than that. Yeah, if someone wants to be on a team, but do you match them up with people? Like, do you provide that service, or do they have to find their own team? No, actually, people can register as individuals, uh, and we can help them find teams. That's uh, pretty common, uh, actually. And we've been getting those inquiries already, so we can definitely help you. And, oh, that's good. and let's look at Kyron's, uh, the ending of Kyron's game here against Arthur Liu. Uh, sacrificed. Well, that's not really a sacrifice because if you take it, you pick up the rook. But it sounds better if you say sacrifice. Okay, okay. And there it is. So uh, quick work from uh, Kyron in getting the yeah, job Kyron done. Yeah, Kyron might join us in the chat then. There we go. And Kyron will be taking a bye for rounds three and four. So he'll be entering the final round with uh, three There's out of four. Yeah. Yeah. So we're back to board two here with uh, Tejas Mahesh and Gadir. Okay. So the strong knight on d4 turned into a strong pawn on d4. Yeah, that pawn so looks I'm not sure that my, um, yeah, yeah, this is now, you know, Black has just been calling the shots here. And uh, Kyron is saying in the chat that this is a pretty instructive positional game. Yeah, it has been. Queen b4, if white trades, then pressure down the a file. Um, Black is sort of playing this kind of model King's Indian, very sad white bishop. <laughs> <laughs> no scope. Yeah. And now maybe Queen C3 or A4. Yeah, this is just, you know, this is a uh, chess by the numbers, you know, sort of like um, it's got that feel to it. Check this position out. Uh, this is Rui's game against uh, Max.
kind of a odd looking queen side i agree that is odd looking <laughs> But she is currently up a pawn, uh, this coming out of a Catalan. Oh, yeah, I mean, you like being up a pawn here. Absolutely. Yeah. You're up a pawn, and, the, the ships, and those acorns but... don't look very healthy for white either, so. Looks like black. White's got the two bishops, needs to make something happen. Yeah, I mean, there's no, I, I, it's black's move. So, I mean, white might have some discovery along the, you know, long diagonal by moving the knight, but it's black's move. So I'm sure if there was anything, black could uh, take care of that problem now, but I don't even see any good knight moves. So um, I think black is fine. So let me uh, check on Reka Stare here. Playing white against Sebi Suarez. Is Reka winning the tournament? She is she tied for first. Team. She's yeah. tied for first. Tied for first. Yeah. But uh, Sebi looks up a pawn here, so. Up a pawn is always good. But uh, Reka will feel no pain today as uh, she is elated to be going to Oxford University, so. That is the big news. So exciting. Yeah, very exciting. Yeah, I guess it is that time of year where you start getting the college acceptance letters, although that seems a little early, you know, which is good. Yeah, well, no diff well, different schools do it at different times, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So I wonder if uh, hopefully by this fall, Oxford will be in person so she can actually go to England. Yeah, I'm wondering. I wonder what uh, what they currently do now. And I mean, I just saw in the news, UC Berkeley plans to do in person in the fall. Wow. Which, which is which is still, you know, a, a long ways away, right? August, September. But yeah, you know, they seem like they're looking that that's going to happen. So we'll see. Is, has UC Berkeley been entirely online all this time? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think, think I, I think with the ex I think with the exception of like classes that, you know, like certain PE classes and things like that, but like instructional classes, I think they're all. Yeah, online. Texas is much more. Let's get out there and. Virus. <laughs> I mean, there's in person. Day in-person public school here in-person university stuff here it's a, it's a lot different i think than california yeah yeah uh, same with alabama yeah, california's been very restrictive <laughs> and micro bear yep yep congrats to reka yeah eric Khan. how come you're not playing the tournament you should be in here we got like strong players all over the place Maybe, maybe play Thursday, right? You have options. You got options, yeah. You got options on Thursday night, too. One game, game is 60 plus five on Thursdays. All right, let's check in on... Daffigan. Oh, I was going to mention something about hey, Daffigan. Yeah, hey, go for it. No, he's playing a very interesting, you know, solid game so far. And, you know, probably he's going to take on F3 and just... Um, he's adopting a kind of a wait and see attitude versus Lenderman here. Here comes the minority attack yeah. or some variation of the minority attack. Interesting game still. Here's a game that we haven't checked in on yet. This is uh, Ethan Boldy uh, playing white against uh, Nathan Fong from UC Berkeley. Okay, Nathan's a good Knight's player. Before, right? But it is Black's move. It is Black's move. 
So black has some two bishops and some kind of counterplay here. Yeah, I, I imagine mean, black is going to try to play h5, h4. He's down a pawn, but white's position. You know, that white queen is kind of going to get harassed, right? That's Yeah, it is getting harassed. Yeah, I mean, maybe black could, if black wanted to draw, black could probably just keep attacking the queen and, you know, repeat or something. Yeah, but probably he's going to try to win. Hey, Paul, uh, in game lab. What do you think? Yeah, of, what, what about in game lab? Well, what do you think of this position? Are we in an end game? If, if, I don't yet. You don't think so? It's wow. Well, I mean, this is, you know, this is. A tough one to call. Like, what do you think? Like, what's the if you're Eric? Like, what are you looking to I do? Mean, I, and I, I, yeah, I'm not Nit sure. Natish just offered a draw white white. Just offered. I think I think this position looks looks pretty even now. And uh, Eric declined it like right away. Yeah, I mean the black black can probably bring his king up to d5 or f5 or something like that. But then what? I mean, he still has to try to find. I mean, I guess black has more play here, and that's why he's declining a draw. Just more. Just black advanced. has more more things to do. He can try. Uh, King d5 and then a5 and b4 or something like that. And there's, there's all kinds of things black can try. Well, we'll keep an eye on this game. Let's go back to board two. And uh, Gadir is pushing. Yeah, yeah black has all the play. Uh, it might be a draw, but. And this game is just like I said, I mean, this is, this is, uh, you know. White's on the verge of collapsing here. He can't play rook v1 because of d3. So then it's just knight is so I mean, strong. Almost, yeah. I mean, bishop e1, then you got to try to find some tactics here. It, it, all the pieces are just so restricted. White. Yeah. Happy New Year, Happy New Year V Chess Master. Yeah, Happy New Year, everyone. And uh, so yeah, we can try Bishop A one if Queen A three, Pawn B four. Oh wow! And Tejas giving up the exchange right there. Yeah. Well. That doesn't look like it's going to work out. Yeah, because black is going to take and then open up the A file, and it's just, there's just, you know, it's a bit of desperation here. Yeah. I mean, black might just leave the rook on D3. That would be grandmasterly, take on B3 and play rook A3 or something like that. Yeah. Grandmasters have great restraint. They, 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 um, if they see something hanging, oh, well, he takes it. Yeah, because, because rook a3 now, yeah, it's bad. So moving over to Lenderman and Gaffigan. So Lenderman's going full speed ahead on the queen side. And Gaffigan's going to have to try to do something here. Yeah, maybe he'll. Um, All right. Black could do that. Black's G6 doesn't really fit in with. That was maybe the first dubious move, I think. Okay, but given that, 
I'm asking whether night 94 might be okay here. Yeah, 94, but then Black still has to follow up, and he maybe with if he can play pawn e5 soon, but yeah, g6 just is kind of neither here nor there. Maybe he's going to take on f3 and play f5 or something. I don't know. Black really needs to get something going here before before the uh, the screws get turned. <laughs> That's a, quite an image. Cool yeah, side. yeah. Does not sound uh, good at all. Huh? Let's take a look at Elliot, who is trying to. Well, I guess that, that was a victory for him in in getting the draw in the last round. Absolutely. He was in danger of losing, so right. sure. Well, here he's in danger of winning, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a better danger to be in. <laughs> and he is playing this is another, This is another tough position. Jeez. I mean, um, White would love to scoop up the D4 pawn, but might not be. Yeah, I mean, White's got to be better here. All the all that's bad is that d4 pawn. If he can just go like king d2 and then bring the other rook into the game. Yeah, that seems like a good plan. You know, or maybe even um, put your bishop on f3. Yeah, even bishop f3 right now, maybe. Gotta worry if about. Your, if your bishop is on f3, it makes it so hard for that black bishop to ever move. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, bishop f3, then bishop e6, and then you have to sort of look at what's going to happen with the pawn running down quickly. That's or true. Something. No, I mean, I agree that what was played, king d2, is, is maybe the thing to do first. I'm just talking eventually the bishop might be yeah, free. Yeah, you're absolutely as, right. As a long-term plan. But this yeah, is tough for black. I like king d2 to just <laughs> put put a stop to that d pawn having any dreams at all i'm gonna take a look at this game that is happening and let me back up a few moves this is uh william sartorio is uh white against uh philip gerstoft and you can see this is the current position what do you think of this yeah, with the Sartorio's up upon. Well, Rook takes d6, maybe? Rook takes d6. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. It might not work. It might not work, because on e7 check, Black could maybe play Rook f7. Right, that's true. Well, queen d4 seems like a reasonable centralizing kind of move, and now you're threatening yeah, the queen. Yeah, it does. And, and then bishop d5 will threaten the feet four pawn. Or, I mean, black black is on the verge of, yeah. Oh, yeah, white's got pawn c7. That's, that's, that's crushing. Yeah. And let me... Yeah, Kyron is absolutely on point as usual. Before, yeah. Very tough for Black here. Yeah. And what you were saying on the Queen side, this is the current position with uh, Lenderman and Gaffigan. Lenderman Gaffigan has a kind of a, a, a nice ring to it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Gaffigan, Lenderman, Lenderman, Gaffigan. Hagler, Hearns. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good ring. Tyson Douglas. I don't know what Black is doing. I mean, Black has moved his bishop to g4, now back to f5. And meanwhile, White's gotten all this stuff going on the queen side. Black gonna go back, bishop to g4. Mm 
<laughs> a law firm. <laughs> Lend Lender <laughs> Lenderman Gaffigan <Oops>. LLC. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering about that. You know, I, I can't contribute anything to the chess being played, so I'm... You know. I'm wondering if Kyron's talking about knight g5 here uh, uh, to try to make lots of trades. No, I think he's talking about pawn g5. I mean, black needs to do some something here before he just yeah, gets okay. kind of overrun. Um, and... And just exchanging pieces in the center is not going to do anything for black. It's going to be all white on the queen side at some point. Well, this this particular trade, now white's going to make a pass C pawn eventually, right? That could be a problem. Yeah. Black's look, rook is looking very silly on B8 right now. And uh, Let me flip over to this game because there's some action happening here between uh, Ethan Boldy and Nathan Fong. So, oh, I guess because of your talking about the pawn on G3 is the action that yeah, is so, happening. Well, I was talking about White's so, yeah. got the rook stacked up uh, on the king side over there. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's fair too. I mean, there's stuff happening on. I think I, to me, to me, black. I mean, has not really gotten the attack going yet. I mean, I'm looking at white's going to take back on a rook c7. That's two rooks for a queen. In this position, yeah, I don't know, know why it'll do that. Either. Yeah, I mean... Uh, How about Gusinev's game? I think... Uh... And White takes back with the F-pawn. That's interesting. He's worried about maybe getting mated over on the king side. Right, on the H-file. He was... He's got but here we are the exchange. He's got the... Gusinev is winning, right? He took the exchange. This is horrible. Yeah. And uh, Kyron saying the GMs are winning very instructive games. Positional That's chess. Right. Positional chess. Right. Yeah, well, Lenderman's not quite winning yet, but um, Gadir is certainly winning. Mm -hmm. And he did that. Uh, Lenderman, he played, uh, I mean, uh, Gaffigan looks like he played. Oh, he just Could barely. You find yeah, but. It, oh, yeah. yeah. He was listening to Kyron. Good job. But he played bishop g4 first, and then ah. he keeps going back and forth with the bishop. I mean, Lenderman, it's just like he's giving up a lot of tempo. Almost. Um, I've played Gaffigan, and Gaffigan's a difficult opponent some in a, in some ways to play against. Um, what's White going to do here? Rook f1. Uh, with the idea of playing knight e5, maybe? No, then bishop e2 and knight c3. I mean, it's a little bit tricky here. White has to sort of figure out the the right um, sequence here. Of course, if the knight e5, queen f2 check, so... This is this is a little bit puzzling because black doesn't have a threat even with g5. I mean, it's a funny looking move. Yeah. So since since um, black doesn't have a threat, does that mean we can just go ahead and play things like c6 and c7? Or? Well, c6 can't do it right now. Not right now. That's true. We need to relocate. But our maybe queen. rook a1. Or queen a3, get our queen off of the that file. Right? The, the question is, does black have any threat here? Like, the queen is sort of indirectly defending f2. So if you play queen a3, black might, you know, try hey, something. Hey, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. OK. Sure. This is an interesting position. Uh, Lenderman is yeah, thinking here. Yeah, 
Especially we can talk about it. And he played Rook F1. I called it. Crazy. Oh, yay. Good job. <laughs> All right. So now well, we now need... 90. Now the question is, knight e5 is not quite a threat or an idea yet because black can take on e2 and then play knight c3. So although even that's possible. But white, white's just kind of a little prophylaxis here is a good thing. This rook f1 maybe. Right. Giving white a bit of a free hand. Asking well, black, like what are you going to do? Maybe we can play something like queen a3 and c6. You know, c6 could be a really yeah. annoying move at some point if we get. And, and Gaffigan just slams out rook fd8. Like there's nothing, no problem. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, okay, so I mean, there's some traps here. Like if white plays rook a1, then knight takes c5. You know. Uh, see, we are we are gonna get going, going on. Well, at, at some point, right? Uh, I'm just flipping to this game. Oh, this this is yeah, this is Nicholas Wang and uh, Nicholas Boldy, but Nicholas. Hey, two Nicholas. Yeah, that sounds like some kind of tournament director. Uh, <laughs> on high jinks. But, Nicholas. Uh, Nicholas. But uh, yeah, we'll pair the, in this round, we're going to pair the Thomases together and the Nicholases together, right. <laughs> yeah. the Alexanders together. And uh, Mike Walder won his game. Oh, wow. Wow. Nice. And that's a nice Your final. Nicholases or Nikolai, according to Chiron. That's a good point. <laughs> it's going to be hot, hard to pair the Chirons that's, together. That's the plural. Huh? Yeah, we only have one Chiron. And here we have. Uh, I think Michael's got this one under control. <laughs> Sorry, I keep getting up on my my rabbit, who you can no longer see because of my UT Dallas background. My rabbit's going around being naughty, so Einstein. I'm chasing him, but uh, <laughs> this, hopefully he'll so, settle down. This is a tough position. This is, yeah, this is very interesting. Uh, we've talked about this before, how Roy likes playing these kind of um, openings that are are difficult positionally. Uh, this is, um, so black is wants to take on f2, black has queen c6, but there's all kinds of things, tactics going on here. And do you think she does that because she would rather have counterplay opportunity or space to make something happen? Well, you know, the thing is, like, to play, learning how to play sophisticated openings and positionally oh, is very good practice. I mean, knowing how to play Slavs and, and Queen's Gambit Cat and Catalans and stuff, that's stuff I never learned. I, I, you know, to me it was like burn your bridges with the King's Indian defense, and you know, never learn how to play positionally. And um, so, the, learning how to play these kind of openings is going to stand her in good stead. And this is the, wow. This is uh, Eric Lee Black against uh, Nitish. Oh, this has been huge progress for Black. Black is looks like he's winning now. For sure. Black is the one that refused the draw for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And managed to win a pawn there on the queen side. And this is now a winning, uh, for sure, a winning position. So you, well done you by, um, by, by Black. Yeah. So going back to this game, this was uh, William Sartorio and Philip Gerstoff. Hmm. So black is black has been hanging in there uh, in this game. Looked like he was really lost, and now there's 
some possibilities for black if he can hold weird. on and yeah. still white has only up a pawn. Some pawns that are some targets right now, like two different white pawns are. Uh, well, I guess the white pawn in F4 is not well, actually. Well, wait a minute here. Rook e7, king e7, rook d7, king f6, rook d6, um, rook e8, yeah, pawn c7. Pleasant. That's that maybe a lot of blacks just I, lost it. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, and and Karen said the same thing. Yeah. 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 Does well, black have any cheapo based on the e pawn on his past e pawn? Probably not. So now rook, rook d6. d6. Yeah. Whammo, rook e8, pawn c7. That's black can't black has mm. no time to play rook e yeah. Well that that happened fast. There you go. So I was thinking that black might have time to take some pawns, but those pins no. are too painful. And Gadir did close the show against uh, uh Yeah, Tejas that game Mahesh. was that 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 should be a good lesson for Tejas. Um, right out of the opening, he was worse, or or you know somewhat worse. Um, it's worth looking at that opening for him. And it looks like uh, Gaffigan either lost or gave up the bishop. Uh oh. Okay, so rook g6, rook g1, rook h6, rook g2. I don't think black is getting enough here. And coming up is a very strong pawn c6. Um, I've been waiting for pawn c6, so yes. You hear the sirens? That is uh, the, say, the world's coming to an end over there. Sirens right? of San Francisco. <laughs> look at look at this game with uh, Elliot Winslow. Yeah, weren't we saying Elliot was having a little trouble with that D pawn? But it looks like he's gotten it under control. Oh yeah, now he's got a big pass pawns on the on the uh, queen side. Oh hey, and Mike has joined us. Hi Mike. Hey Mike, congratulations. Elliot's giving up the exchange though. That's true. Yeah, it took me a second to notice that. Good point. <laughs> So he's got but no, I, three connected pass pawns is pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. Black is going to have to get some serious counterplay here and yeah. very quickly. Otherwise, this game is over. And, you know. and uh, going back to uh, Rui's Michael Walter leading the tournament. Yay, Michael. This is, you're going to be, time to give those grandmasters a beat down. <laughs> Next week, next Tuesday. Yeah, that'll be a big, uh, big round. And wow, Rui is fighting for her life here. I mean, White is White is trying to swarm in and win, but it seems like she just captured some material. Though. Yeah, some pawns or something. Yeah. Can White break through here? Two pawns down. I don't know. Yeah, that's right. Two pawns down. White's trying to bust in. So, um, bishop f5, knight f5, uh, rook c7 maybe? Oh, but then bishop h3. And Eric, yeah, Eric Lee did win his game. <laughs> G4. <laughs> that's a great idea. G4. G4, G5. And then G5, yeah. That's the kind of crazy thing that, that sometimes needs to happen. <laughs> yeah. When you're two pawns down, you got to go for it, right? Yeah. Black's got knight G6, though, but then queen G7 check, maybe. How does that work? We can't play rook takes g7. Then oh. rook takes g7 check and a windmill. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe. Oops. 
This is a t this is you know things are. Yeah, Queen H8 mate is a good answer to G5. I agree with that, Christian. Queen H8 mate is kind of kind of uh, makes G5 unplayable. Well, no, I think the um, G4 not after G4. G4 I think I G4 bishop yeah. moves then yeah. G5 yeah, for white. Yeah, I think you're right. Yes, I think yeah. I think, I think it was G4 and then G5 for white, without. With yeah, G four moves then G five, right? Oh, and look at this rook D eight. That's a possibility too. And if Bishop H three, rook takes F eight, King F eight, rook D eight may. Oh wow! Look at all those combinations. Wow. That's that would be yeah. That there's a lot of stuff good. going on here. Yeah. But maybe black could take take on d8 and then play king h7. Then maybe white plays rook f8. And then rook f8? Six. What's the follow-up there? Knight g6. OK. Boy, this is a tough one for sure. Right, here we go. Did this work for white? Bishop f5, that just seems like helping black out here. Well, I, yeah, I guess. Oh, g4, OK. I guess we're wow. just leaning for the okay, queen. OK, so that's seven, kind eight. of the same idea. Yeah, and, and thank you, Fiery Griffin, for pointing out about the rook takes f8, queen g7 mate. Um, that's a good point. And the other line, very good point. Black is on the precipice here. But with enough time to figure it out. So, OK, then I just retreat. That actually makes some sense. Now, how do we how do we keep pushing to get to G7? I'm a little confused. Like, what's our next move here for white? Maybe Rook D8 again? OK. Wow. No, I have the question. Then knight g6. OK, well, I guess they play queen takes c7. But so now we're just trying to win the knight, but a rookie eight to defend the knight? I don't know. This is starting to look really complicated for sure. I mean, it's always been complicated. Oh. Yeah, knight, knight d5 is possible, but then... Uh, then maybe rook f7, knight c7, rook g7 check. Well, but, but well, I guess we're going to find out, because it's been played. Knight d5, I, maybe white will try rook f7, but black could take back with the rook. Is black looking at queen b6 here? Well, the queen, white's queen is attacked. Oh, it's, it's uh, white's rook, move. White to move. It's rook f7, rook f7. Yeah. Then then what's the big follow-up at that point? Yeah, that's... If I, any. White can take on d5, but then so what? Black just retakes. Right. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm ag agreeing with the fiery griffin that white's attack is running out of steam here. Unless we're unless we're missing some obvious move. Well, usually I am. <laughs> oh come on! I, I think I think black is the. Uh... Yeah. Okay. So we are looking at rook d five is a try for sure. But then takes he just takes it. Okay, but all right now we said rook takes f seven on this move, right? That's forced. Well, rook, yeah. There's. He's now not going to take the queen. He's not going to take the queen. What She's not going to take the queen. Right. What does white do now? What's the next move for white? I think white's, white's starting to get into trouble here. 
uh, Railbird was in the chat saying Rug XD5 with the threat of the windmill, <clears throat> but I thought you were. I think yeah. that was. The windmill would work. That the was windmill early. would have worked, but um, Black didn't take the queen. Right. Wouldn't wouldn't take the queen. Would just would just um. Or, or wouldn't would just recapture on d5. All right, so I think we think that uh, White has run out of steam here. Is there some other game to look at, or? Yeah, well, uh, Alexander Lenderman closed the show. Oh wow! Yeah. Gaffigan, so won that match. Yeah, uh, Gaffigan's attack had run out of steam. And uh, we could do a check-in on uh, Elliot's game here. Oh yeah, let's against do that. Sanjeev Anand. All right, so the pawns have made some progress, and bishop c4 check might come in, and then you know b5. So it looks like white's white's moving along. Yeah. Yeah, black is black is in trouble. I bet if if there was a computer evaluation, it would it would say white's better. Let's uh, check in on reconnected e past pawns. Is pretty nice. Yeah. Ethan Boldy and Nathan Fawn. Both well, players are trying to attack each other here. <laughs> That's right. I remember this game, yeah, where we were... Paul, you were mentioning about F takes G3 instead of H takes G3, but Black is going ahead and attacking along that H file anyway. I mean, White just wants to trade queens if possible. This is this is just just a tough position with all these misplaced pieces. Right. Like, Black rook at B6 looks so weird here. You know, it can't move without being captured. Um, That's right. Yeah. That's absolutely true. And, yeah, and, and yet the white the egg file instead. You know, where's the attack? I guess Queen A five is kind of a threat. Yeah. You know what? Well, I have a question for you, and it relates to what you just said. Um, so you know that rook on b6 is really misplaced. What if we did something crazy like c5 and, and then rook on b6 to h6? Yeah, I mean, that's possible, that I suppose. To get our rook in the game. Christian Clemens is in the chat saying, why not queen h7 right here? That, well, that would get the queen in the game. Yeah, that's possible. Well, White's going White's, White's to probably see the threat of mate in one and play. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> probably. Rook C2, maybe. Yeah, maybe with Christian's idea, maybe we can play like Bishop H3 for black, and then, you know, Bishop takes F1, and then Queen H3, like get our Queen well, H3. C5, C5, white takes on C5, right and if you play Rook H6, I play Queen E5 check, and black is lost. Uh, okay. Because if queen c7, rook a8 check wins your yeah, queen. Yeah, that's all right. Well, I was just desperately trying to get the rook in the game, so I guess it does not work. But, oh, yeah, bishop f3, yeah. No, I was, saying, I was saying bishop h3, maybe. Bishop h3, just to uh, trade off that bishop and put our queen directly on h3. Yeah. Bishop h3 with the idea of bishop takes f1 and queen to f, uh, queen to h3. This would be good. A different idea. Okay, let's look at that. Rook c2 and then bishop f3. Okay, interesting. Well, this is just one of those positions that it's. It's, uh, it looks like black is a little better just optically, even though he's a pawn down. So switching back to the Max Hao Ru Yang Yan game. Yeah, that game wasn't looking good for, for White. Yeah, and it's... Uh, White's, White's kind of hoping for... Um, 
a perpetual check or a, a chance to, I mean, there's a lot of play here still. It's not, it's not completely over. Although it, it's looking not so good for white now. White didn't seem to, so queen b8 and queen takes b5 it's probably going to be met by rook f3 or something. Yeah, that's that's scary, huh? Not still, you know, okay. So rook f3, then queen takes d5. Then you just take and then take on a3, right? You know, that might actually win for black for sure, even though he lost a piece. Oh no, then rook g7 check. So rook f3, queen d5, e5, rook e7, rook a3, rook g7 check, king f8. A oh, black goes this way, sure. A little simpler. If queen takes e6, queen takes f3. Yeah. Yikes. Not looking good for wow. white at and, all. And F three is protecting D five and F seven. Everything, yeah. This is this is. Um, queen six, queen F three, queen E eight. Yeah, I don't see it. And White never found a way in, and that was the problem. He had a promising attack, but um, when that failed, then Black is able to consolidate. And um, I, I enjoy telling little stories about games, Alexi. <laughs> No, that's good. It's good to have a new Once upon a time, once upon a time, White went for a little walk in the woods. <laughs> It was a and cold black, and dreary night. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a, yeah. And then... <laughs> Dark and dreary. And then met the big bad wolf and so on and so forth. I think that's fun. And actually, uh, last round, Abel and I got to see Kyron build a bridge in a Luciano position. And that's one of my favorite little stories, you know, to explain a position is the whole building a bridge. Yeah, those are fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is looking pretty, pretty bad. I was able to trade one of those rooks out. Yeah, and Elliot's like, go ahead and take my bishop, and then my pawn will promote. So. Yeah, nice yeah. move. Nice little trick, a6. Yeah. This is, um, yeah. I'm not even gonna read that comment. <laughs> yeah. We'll just let that sit there. Just let it uh, let it hang, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Simon Williams is a pretty famous uh, chess fella, isn't he? Yes. I have not watched Simon Williams's broadcast. He's, he's so right. Uh, uh, this, this is not actually tempting me to do so. <laughs> there's also Kevin Spraggett is in the same um, sort of. Does Kev? Oh, really? Does Kevin do online broadcasting? I don't think so. I, I mean, I know he has a like a a blog, but I didn't know if he did online stuff. Yeah, it's a chess blog. Yeah. And now here's Rui just marching the pawns on down. Right. Yeah, this is this is not good for White. So Rui's going to have two points after today as well. And uh, look at this other game still going. Reka has uh, three. She's down a pawn, though. That's going to be a challenge. Yeah, but it's it's you know, it's still going to be they're still going to fight it out. I guess Black's going to create a passed pawn on the king side. So here we got this position now with Ethan Boldy and yeah, Ethan. Black can play king e six and f five. So, and the black the black bishop did get in on f three, and Black has sacrificed a rook. That's right. Wow. A rook. 
to try to get in and checkmate, huh? Has Black sacrificed two rooks? <laughs> uh, white can play king takes h2, and then where's the mate? Queen h7, seven. Uh, king g1, queen h1, king, king up two, two, queen h2, king e1, queen takes g3. King, yeah, that's not good for white. I think white should, but white can play bishop h3, and then um, on g4 play queen d8 check, and that's got to be the end of, although maybe not. Oh, wow. Played uh, B, queen b7. Amazing. <clears throat> yeah, this is this is actually, black really went all in on this, so if it doesn't you know. work, it's going to be material down. Rook h1, king f2, rook f1, what else? Then rook f1, and there's not even a check. So, mm -hmm. wow, black just threw it all at white, and then maybe it's not actually going to work. That's no, it doesn't look sort of like it's sad, You know? And there like it is. There it... Yeah, it's a bad sober. Oh. I mean, I think Black probably had lots of other options other than like sacrificing, you know, a rook. Two rooks? Or two rooks, yeah. I mean, that's, it seems like if we backtrack, maybe there were other things Black could have done. I'm sure. And uh, Rui won her game against Max Howe. Congratulations. And just check. And we're going to miss Kyron. We're going to miss Kyron next week, huh? That's right. He's got uh, two buys next week because he will be in Charlotte competing for his That's second right. I Am Norm. His second I That's Am Norm. That's right. And uh, I think he'll get it done. I think he'll get it done. We'll, we will be pulling for him. Absolutely. This is just a matter of time before Elliot's able to um, put this away, I think. And uh, oh, round two here. So it's always tricky. It's always well, trickiness. I like, I like Bishop B from check, driving the and that Bishop C four. Although maybe King C6 here, I guess. And then Bishop C4, and then King D4. Oh, wow. Now, King C4, can't we? Oh, we can't play Rook takes A6 because B5 check. Oh, King that's... C4 is even better. Yeah, King C4 is nice because now we next move we'll play B5 all in one move. So good for Yeah, us. that's. Uh, hi, that's uh, Sebi has ends. Hi, Sebi. Hey, Sebi. When you were a pawn up, Sebi. Congrats. Is that did Sebi win that a pawn up against Rika? He uh, he did. Close the show. Congratulations. We did we did watch the game. Look at all well, that, all that firepower coming at you. Going back to this, this game. This is yeah. not good this for is, Black. Uh, Elliot will win this. Oh yeah. Well, we are still trying to get our checkmate. <laughs> so, but unfortunately, White has Black in check. Yep. King e6, Queen c8 check wins the queen. King e7, Rook b7 check, and it's all over. Or Queen e5 check. Black is uh, a move late here. Wow, all the times are getting really low. It must be must be the uh, witching hour. It, it is, yep. Yeah. It is that time. And Ethan Boldy with a, a really nice win against a very, yeah. very tough uh, Nathan Fong. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, wow. Now, a piece up, so Black could possibly just resign here. 
Yeah, Elliot knows how to win this one. <laughs> knows how to win when he's a piece and a pawn in Elliot. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. And uh, how many more games are there? And that is it. Elliot Winslow gets that done. And Judith, if you are listening, are there any more games going? Because uh, all it's the not the night has really flown by. All the games I had pulled up. When are you're finished. having fun, it goes yeah, it goes fast. And it's going to be uh, a pretty exciting uh, round three and four because there's actually quite a few uh, strong players with two and zero, oh, and they'll be uh, they'll be facing each other. And uh, congrats, Elliot, who is in the chat. A one game left. Yeah. David Askin. All right, and he was one of the last games also in uh, the. In the other, other match, so some me, people like to always be the last game going. Let me pull his game up. Let me find him. Oh, let's see. All right. Oh, Elliot says it's tiramisu and coffee. Like sugar and caffeine got him through the round, basically. There you go. Well, sometimes you got to load up on the bad stuff yeah. to make good things happen. And here's the game between David Askin and Patrick Cut. Oh, wow. So this is, this is an interesting position for Black to have with 40 seconds left. You know, it's uh, complicated. It's very complicated. I, I think Black should just go ahead and trade on F3, get that over with. You know, like don't spend t 10 seconds trading on F3 when you know you're going to do it. Somehow, you think it should be a draw because of the reduced material. But I mean, black has got some loose pawns. That's a loose move. It's a very loose move because bishop takes, uh, knight takes, and then maybe we can play king c4, although maybe we can't. Maybe knight takes a3 would come in. Oh, wow. Nice, nicely That's seen. That's exactly what I just said, Christian. Nicely seen. <laughs> it's on that. Piece. Oh my gosh, there it is. Oh my God, it's gonna happen. Oh my gosh. Why uh, should have played Bishop D5? Look at how White is just like played it super cool and didn't take the knight. <laughs> that was pretty super cool. Yeah, you have to be cool in these situations. <laughs> yeah, Christian. But, uh, but on the other hand, knight C2 threatens A3. Yeah, this is not a fun position to have with 17 seconds left, you know. Black couldn't have played a3 there. I, it looks to me like Black's winning. Oh no! Can't if he plays a3, then King takes b3. Right, <laughs> and then oh, oh yeah. Up. King f6 doesn't do much. Maybe. Well, wins you know, I actually it went to e6. Uh, I thought it might go to g5 and f4. Yeah. King b yeah, I agree, Elliot. I thought King G5. But now it's very drawish, right? And uh, Black Ooh. Black offered a draw here. That's a strange move, King E6, like you said. And Black finds himself a pawn down. Hmm. So I guess White is thinking about the draw offer and well this is a draw and Mike sure. Walder is saying it's a draw yeah I know but black maybe white's thinking about it because white has a lot more time yeah I mean David declined white it did refuse the draw offer. that's right but you know if black just circles around and puts that knight on f4 then 
how do we, as white, make progress? We just keep going back to F4. Yeah, exactly. Well, this... I don't see how white can win this. You know, if you trade on F4, then you just sack your knight for the E pawn, and then it's yes. a draw. Definitely a draw. Well, unless you do something dumb, like lose your knight. But, yeah. I mean, there's not even any real tricks because that black king is so well placed defending the e pawn. So, you know. Yeah, this is the this is the this is white's a real playing, loss. White's just playing for time, I guess. But black seems pretty comfortable and. Right, black seems pretty confident, gaining some time back. I think David wants the win after what happened to him in the last round where it looked like the position was pretty even but uh, was low on time and uh, ended up getting mated. Oh, so he's hoping to make up for it this game. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't seem to be gaining. Well, uh, this is like watching paint dry on the wall, folks. <laughs> Not really, because you know there's the time factor. You no, know, we can we can watch that clock go down. <laughs> and and actually, Kyron's got a great point here. Why should play knight takes e5, and f4 check. Yeah, and play with the two pawns, because then when you win, and on you know what? Even that would be a draw, though. King f6, uh, f4 check, uh, king f6, fg5, king. Uh, yeah, it's still a draw. Time when you've got two pawns, then it's a win, right? Because you have mating material. If you win on time when you have the pawns. Black would take the diagonal opposition and draw, <laughs> maybe. And even if uh, you play on, like you have to have a, the idea of what you're trying to achieve, right? Yeah, you're trying to achieve a win on time, I think. Well, or like Karen <laughs> said, some kind of knight takes e5 check and then a pawn fork. Uh -huh. That was right. kind of possible, almost. Well, and now we can play this, king f5. f5. Yeah, king, well, I thought the king was coming to f5, but then it didn't. Well, I don't think it can with the, with the uh, king okay. sitting on f6. Well, that knight on d4 looks pretty strong because now it's... Oh, here we go. King f5. Oh, then knight d4. Well, then king... Yeah. I think black's just got enough resources oh, here. We go. here. Great question about the 50 move rule. The computer the, knows the, all about the yeah. 50. The computer knows all that? Okay. It's oh, look at... Wow, look at this. What? Oh, he's got 95 now. Uh oh, well, that was. Oh, he had 95. Yeah, yeah, I think it happened. I think you're a move behind there, Paul. Yeah. Mm, oh, he played F4, but, uh, but I mean, look at this. Yeah, he, he achieved it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. When, uh, you know, you're so low on time. Look at he's, that. He's got to defend. Unbelievable. I know, that's too bad for black. I think the time pressure got to black. And just the the frustration of it too, of, uh, you know. Yeah. Fantastic win by David Askin. You know, because it takes a lot to just keep uh, plugging away and you're, and you're waiting for that error, right? You're waiting for right. that. Yep. And uh, we've so seen so much of this. 
Yeah. David Askin, congratulations and sticking it through. Really? And, and getting it done. Speaking of sticking it through, uh, Alexi, thank you for sticking it out with us and uh, covering the two rounds. Well, my pleasure. I always enjoy being a part of it, whether it's in chat or actually on the broadcast. Wow. We, we love it's having you. We love having you on and with uh, your writing and including it in the newsletter. And uh, um, and uh, Paul, it seemed like the uh, internet behaved a little bit better. It did. I'm, I'm actually on a, on a hot spot, I, but uh, <laughs> I'm feeling that would have, anyway, I made my phone a hot spot. Yeah, it worked, Isn't that apparently. amazing? That's good. <laughs> and Elliot's, <laughs> Elliot's in the chat he's saying he just noticed the uh, MI logo. That's how exciting the game was. <laughs> he started staring at the... Is he looking at the logo? <laughs> right, looking at the logo, not, not even at the what board. What are talking about? It is animated? What is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and Christian Clement. Yeah, I mean, Christian, you're right. It, you know, watching the games as a spectator is a whole lot of fun. And it's fun to play too, but man, you are, you're feeling the fear when it's you uh, up on there. So round two is in the book. Thanks books. everybody for watching. And uh, the, Incredible. the standings will be uh, updated very soon uh, by Judith's estimate, usually uh, three minutes. Uh, well, it's done already, so well, let's pull oh, it up here. This is what Elliot meant. The live thing is animated. <laughs> I was just looking around like, what's he talking about? So that, yeah, there's like a purple circle going around the live logo. And there we go. Do do people see? I think Kyron's going to win this thing. With in, his two uh, lives next round? No, week. not this one, but the one in... Uh, oh, okay, okay. So all yeah. the... All the players from Lenderman at the top to William Sartorio, those are two out of two. Okay. So Lenderman, no Hussein, uh, Griffith, Eric Lee, Rui, Ethan, Mike Walder, no surprises. Uh, and then with one and a half is uh, Elliot Winslow and Nicholas Wang. So uh, th those. So does that mean Elliot will get paired up to someone who has two? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Only uh, yeah, he might because we have eight players: three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then Kyron will be taking a bye next week. So, uh, could see, I... Elliot, he's taking a bye. You're not counting. That. We have to throw him to the wolves. Yep. No That's matter right. what. <laughs> That's right. He has to play up to a two. And then in the under eighteen, under the bus. In the under eighteen hundred. Aaron Nikoski at the top all the way through Bill Day are 2-0. and oh, So that is Nikoski. Andrew Ballantyne. Next week, let's look at one of those a games. Andrew Ballantyne defeated uh, Mateo Hansen in this game. So wow. very Andrew. nice. Eating your Wheaties. Eating his Wheaties, yeah. Sh uh, Shiv Sohal, uh, two wins. So... Uh, We'll, uh, we should look at we should look at, uh, at at some of those games next week. Yeah, definitely uh, on on the on the on the lower section because uh, uh, we're gonna have some really interesting matchups on the top in the under eighteen hundred. So uh, we'll follow some of those games. Plus, those are games I can understand more. Well, I remember way back when you guys used to do this live from the mechanics, you would always follow the top board in the lower section. Absolutely. In, ad in addition to the games from the top section. Uh, at the mechanics, at the live TM? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We had our the top uh, eight in the uh, open, and then we had the top game in the uh, under 2,000, and then the top in the under 1,600. That's right. And yeah, maybe we should do that tradition again because I think it gives the people in the the under section a real incentive to get onto the top board of their section. Well, I mean, we, yeah. online we can it's follow. Much do that. and That's it, true. We can jump around. Yeah, yeah. we can jump That's around. Right. So, well, Abel's always taken me to these faraway boards. <coughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I try to go to like you know the you know top in the under fourteen hundred, and Paul look at it and like, all right, well, let's see what Kusainov is doing. Let's see what <laughs> <laughs> let's see what Lenderman's doing. So, but uh, sixty five players currently registered. Wow. We may even get a few more trickle in. Uh, fantastic, fantastic turnout, fantastic TNM. It's great that the TNM is back and we're we're doing it in twenty twenty one. And uh, here we are. We should have some action chess for next week. All right. Uh, before we uh, get ready to sign off pretty soon, just a special thank you to uh, Judith Starry in the back. Well, wait a minute, Abel. Abel, you've got to think about who to raid. You can't forget that. I, I, GM, Lightning, GM Lightning raided you earlier. Uh, that is true. But before I do that, let me thank Judith Starry for keeping everything smooth in the in the back room, uh, starting all the games and uh, loading up the standings and pairings. Thank you very much, Judith, for that. Judith. And, uh, and uh, thank you, Alexi, and thank you, Paul, for joining uh, the broadcast. And... Uh, Whoops, let's see who we Judith can... Judith Proud Mama. <laughs> yeah, big day in the, the Starry household. And, and uh, talking about some poker going on. I wonder if that's... I'm assuming that's online. Live? They still... I'm assuming it's online. But I don't know. All right, let's give uh, let's give some love to the folks at the Chess Dojo because they always give it to us. And they are they are online right now, so uh, thank you everyone for watching the Tuesday Night Marathon. We will be uh, well. The next broadcast is uh, Thursday. We'll broadcast Grandmaster Nick DeFermian's uh, arena, and then uh, we will be back here next Tuesday, 6:30 p.m. for round three of the Tuesday Night Marathon. Thank you, everyone. And uh, David Pruis is streaming, so we'll send you to him. Bye, everyone. Bye. All right.